once in time in the last four or five years. Uh, their program has been kind of down a little bit, but uh, they come in with a lot of hope. Uh, we talked to some of their coaching staff. I mean, for the first time, they actually believe they've got a chance. They, got, they actually have a game plan they think can work. So it's going to be pretty interesting. One of the things to remember is that the Blue Raiders, since uh, Coach Williams has been here, have never scored. They have not been on the scoreboard since he's been the head coach of Mount Carmel area. So also a streak I'm sure they're trying to end as, as quickly as possible tonight. Well, some young coaches coming in here from Tamaqua too. Uh, Mike Bear, who is here with Coach Williams, and uh, Coach Young, who's the head coach. And, and these guys are, they don't probably have the best Tamaqua team we've ever seen, but they have definitely a lot of uh, spirit build up in them and I expect at least a good first half here starting out uh, especially with Mount Carmel area's young team now right now uh, Wayne we lost a lot of people well I'll tell you these are the types of games that you want to start your season off with you're coming off an, uh, an outstanding season last year uh, going undefeated taking the state championship uh, you know you lose some key players along the way you know it's it's a rebuilding year we have a lot of experience coming back so you do not want to get into uh, the beginning of the season uh, with with any type of powerhouse you want you want to work all the kinks out you know you only have two scrimmages one is a controlled scrimmage the other one is a live scrimmage and you come into the first game now the first I guess first two games the next one will be Panther Valley are great games for Mount Carmel just to rebuild on just to get the kinks out and get everything working correctly before you get into the meat of your schedule Red Tornadoes getting ready to take the field here at the Silver Bowl and while they do that we'll go over some of the starting lineups first we'll cover the Red Tornado defense Starting at defensive end for the Red Tornadoes tonight, number 80, Chris Cuff. He's a junior, six foot, 200 pounds. Back into the meat of the lineup, which are the three guys returning from last year, number 60, a tackle, Jason Malakoski, a junior, 6'4", 250 pounds. At nose guard, number 54, Jeff Evans, a junior, 5'7", 190. At the other tackle, number 42, Mike Sinkovich, a junior, 5'9", 210 pounds. At defense, the other defensive end, number 71, Dan Dalkus, a junior, 6'1", 205 pounds. A heck of a front line there for the Red Tornadoes, Wayne. I'll tell you what, you, you, you take a look at last season when we left, uh, I saw the boys uh, after the season, right after Thanksgiving, uh, or after the season anyway, getting into the weight room and they started hitting the weights. The two people that impressed me the most, I'm putting weight on, are two defensive ends, Chris Cuff, who's now 200 pounds, and Dan Dalkus, 205. There's two kids that left the season last year at about 155, 160 pounds, and it just shows you what the weight training does to a program. That's right. Now we go to the linebackers. At left linebacker, number 42, Steve Zinkovich, a junior, 5'9", 190 pounds. And number 32, Rusty Lashinsky, a senior, 5'10", 185 pounds. Both these guys have big shoes to fill, but they're, they're, you know, Steve, a lot of experience there. Rusty coming off the injury, but ready to play. At the cornerback spots, number five, Nick Sebus, the sophomore, 5'11", 170 pounds, fastest individual on this football team. At cornerback, number 44, John Kalinowski, a senior, 5'9", 160 pounds. At the strong safety, number 35, Brian Detry, a senior 5'11", 170 pounds. And at free safety, number 21, Matt Montgomery. The experience here comes from the free safety, Matt Montgomery, a senior 6'2", 180 pounds. Well, you're looking at the defensive backs here, and, and you are right, Montgomery does come in with the most experience. But if you go back to the uh, towards the end of the regular season last year, that Brian Detry did get some playing time, and so did Kalinowski, and, and did show a lot of uh, good playing time when they were out there on the field. Nick Sebus, the sophomore, uh, if, if you followed the track program this season, uh, did an outstanding job. We know that uh, how far Brett Veach went, and Nick in the 100 and the 200 was maybe a step behind uh, Brett Veach. So here you are talking about some speed there. He gives us the speed that Brett gave us last year in that position. The only thing he's lacking a little bit is the experience. Go into the offense. We'll start with the line. Starting at tackle number 72, Jamie Vokler, 6'2", junior, 220 pounds. At guard number 67, Jason Whitovich, a 5'10", 200 pound senior. At center, number 75, 
expected to be the anchor of this line, Jonathan Else, a junior six foot, 280 pounds. Jonathan, the only 15 game starter returning to this offensive line. Actually, to the whole offense. That's true. Starting at the other guard, 59, Aaron Geary, a junior, six foot, 185 pounds. And at the other tackle, number 60, Jason Malakoski, a junior, 6'4", 250. At tight end, number 37, Pete Avellino, a senior, 5'10", 175 pounds. At the split end, Montgomery takes over here, number 21, a senior, 6'3", 185 pounds. At slot back, the freshman, number 25, John Veach, 5'9", 170 pounds. At quarterback, number one, junior, 5'9", 150 pounds, Mike Whitovich. At the fullback, number 42, Mike Sinkovich, a junior, 5'9", 210 pounds. And at tailback, number 47, Steve Sinkovich, a junior, 5'9", 190 pounds. We had to give the starting lineups because it's such a new team coming back. Looking at defense, I think we had four coming back on defense, and we have one back on the offense in Jonathan Else. Well, one, of, one of the things, remember when you talk about people coming we kept back. Wayne, we kept Warren quiet there for <laughs> almost that five a, minutes. I'll that tell you what, that was it unusual. It was definite record. And let me yes. just say it will never happen again. <laughs> <laughs> one of the things, remember that there are only seven seniors on Big Red squad this year. This is a very young football team, and it bodes extremely well for the future since most of these guys come back. Kicking off for the Red Tornadoes, 42, Mike Sinkovich, ball taken by number 40, Noel Powell. Brings it around the right side, find some running room, but in the Mike Sinkovich to the 34-yard line. Nice tackle by Sinkovich, but a couple good cuts by number 40, Noel Powell. Powell will start for Tamaqua at the wide receiver position, but we'll see some action tonight, so says Mike Bear, at tailback. The guy, the guy to look at in Tamaqua, of course, uh, they're, they're heavy on uh, number 12, Fayash, the quarterback. They think he, he's an outstanding prospect. Of course, Boyer, that name has been in Tamaqua history for how long now, the, the name Boyer in football, so He's in the backfield along with and Fayash. He's the lone back right now. Uh, Stouffer's, Stouffer's in the backfield right now. Puts Boyer in motion. Fayash with the quick out. Good play <laughs> by Jason Malakoski. Well, I'll tell you what. Jay, Jay's starting off exactly where he ended last year, getting those arms up in the air, looking out to, you know, keeping the containment from the flat. Well, if, if, if you are a football fan, you followed Mal Cormelaria last year, one of the things that's going to come to mind immediately is that this is a much bigger football team than you watched play last year. Across the board, offensively and defensively, these guys are bigger. We, we come in bigger now. Maybe not the same blazing speed at every position, but much bigger and I think a little uglier when it comes to the hitting part of it. Flags on the play, and that'll be motion on the right side of the Tamaqua line. Five-yard penalty against the Blue Raiders, and they'll face a second down and 15. Well, they certainly do look like a passing team at this point. You know, coming out the first two plays in the, in the first series of downs, and they're ready to throw the ball against us. Well, what, one of the things we had heard last night at Supper Club was that Tamaqua felt that the, one of the keys to, to winning the football game for them would be the short passing game, quick outs, quick over the middles. Now, one of the things I know they didn't take into account was the defensive line. Probably well, between the defensive line and the linebackers, the strongest part of this football team right now. Fayash sets the Blue Raiders. Long count. Back to pass. Dalkus with a big rush. Gets the ball off to Stauffer. And a big nice. hit by number five, Nick Sebus. The young sophomore gets his head in there. Good job by Sebus. Yeah, I'll tell you what. That was, that played, was a that good. Is, go ahead. <laughs> that was a good play by Sebus. If you, if you watched the replay on that, he took his man. His man went straight down the field, opening up the, the uh, flat area there for that little little pass. Sebus released off his man, came up and made a nice hit for a one-yard loss. Third down and 11 yards to go. Well, Se Sebus brings a lot here. I mean, he, he is, he's got the size, and of course, we, we talked about the speed, so he's bringing the whole package into that defensive backfield right now. Fayash, quick, trying for the quick pass, gets tackled, and finally finished off by 54, Jeff Evans. Tamak will face a fourth down and 12 yards to go. And again, initial hit in there as, as the quarterback was spinning around was Jason Malakoski. Well, Jason, I mean, Jason came on so strongly at the end of the year, and, and if you remember the state championship game, game out in Altoona, literally in the second half, completely dominated the side of, the side of scrimmage so that uh, 
Tyrone never ran to his side in the second half. Warriors punt taken by Sebas on about the 39-yard line. Cuts it outside to the 49. Good run back by Sebas. First down and 10 red tornadoes at the 49. I'll tell you what, they had the wall set up. There was one guy had to make that tackle or that might have gone, Wayne. Uh, to, you know, there, there's the kid, there's a line drive shot coming down, and, and they're not the easiest things to take. And there's a, there's a, a kid on the varsity field for the first time, you know, taking that thing on a, on a dead run and, and uh, making some nice yardage. Vitovich sets the Red Tornadoes with the Sinkovich twins in the backfield. Vitovich going to take it out around, looks to pass. Penalty on the play and underthrown a little bit at about the 31-yard line. Man downfield. I'm not sure what this call is going to be. Yes, Ineligible sir. receiver downfield. The play was designed to go to Avellino playing tight end, which is the first right. unusual thing we've seen now. We go to the tight end on the first play from scrimmage. Not usually one of the plays we see a lot of. Uh, one, of one of the things that Coach talked about last night, though, was, was that exact play. Uh, he felt Avellino was an excellent tight end, really come into his own over the past year, and they were going to try to utilize him more. So, I mean, you see it. You see him opening up in the pass. And, and of course, with, with Coach Williams, it's not surprising. I mean, talk about a balanced right. offense. We pretty much do all you can do offensively. We're not uh, one-dimensional by any stretch of the imagination. Al Bailey into the lineup for the Red Tornadoes, number 28. Handoff to Sinkovich. Good tackle made by number 32. That's going to be a loss From Tamaqua, which is uh, Chad Wallace. He came in like a bullet that time. Waleska. What is it? Walaska. Well, help me. Where you at there? Alaska. Alaska. He was in quick that time. Second down, 15 yards to go for the Red Tornadoes. Pitch back. Oh, another big hit in there. The whole Tamakwa defense swarms for about a five yard loss on Sinkovich. Looks like we got some, some opening game jitters here. <laughs> Third <laughs> down offense, and anyway. about uh, 21 yards to go for the Red Tornadoes. And again, with so many new people, it's going to take a little while to mesh this thing. If you, if you get spoiled from last year when they all came back from three years, right. you know they all knew each other. This is a little bit different. They've got a learning process to go through in the first few games. Whitovich back to pass. Looking downfield, and the big rush is on from the Blue Raiders. In on the tackle, number 33, which is Opalski. Fourth down for the Red Tornadoes, and about 26? Well, 21. 21. <laughs> yeah. Jake Shellhammer in punt formation. 26, you were right the first For time. the Red Tornadoes. Snaps back, Shellhammer takes it, kicks away, bounces on about the 39 yard line and flags on the play. That's probably gonna go against us. It happened before he kicked the ball almost, the flags came out, so I believe that's gonna go against us. Status motion, it might be against the punter. The punter does have to stand still and he wasn't. And it's definitely against us. I, you'll never know who they call it on. Yeah. I mean, they, they don't tell you that in high school, but somebody was moving there. And Big Red, just, this is not the way they envisioned beginning the, <laughs> the new season, I'm sure. <laughs> 8.37 left in the first. I'm not sure what that penalty is. Neither. It's a big one, too. How, how did he get a 15-yard penalty without the ball being snapped? I don't know. That's, that's, that may be illegal participation. Okay, too many men on the field. That's exactly what, that's that what was. it was. We had, we had 12 men we on the field. We had 12 men on the field. Okay, we'll take that. Snaps back from Els to Shellhammer. Kicks away. A bouncing kick and only makes it to about the 46-yard line. Before the game started, they had talked about Jeff Evans being the punter and Jake Shellhammer punts here. So on one of the first plays, maybe did Evans hurt his foot or a, a groin or something? I don't know. First down to Makwa from the Red Tornado 44-yard line. Eight thirty-three left in the first quarter. 
Ayash brings the Blue Raiders and sets them. Up the middle of Boyer, tackled by Dalkus and also Jeff Evans. Not much offense on either side of the ball right now. The defenses are dominating, and that, that's to be expected in the first game. That happens a lot of times in all levels of football. So you can expect to see that here tonight. One of, one of the, the things you want to look at, one of the, the oddities, I guess, in Mount Carmel area is there's identical twins on this team again. The Sinkovichs are back this year for as, their, as juniors, I might add, so they're <laughs> going to be here again. But they're identical twins coming out of the backfield, something you don't see very often. Well, when we say Sinkovich carries the ball, we're never yeah, wrong, we are just, we? They made our job 100% easier. Boyer in motion to the right side. Fayash, look for the quick pass. Now he lets one fly deep. Good coverage that time by Chris Cuff, and Chris Cuff went right with him from the end position and Matt Montgomery. Now that's, that's the defense we had seen so much of last year, the year before, with the, with the defensive end, one charging and crashing, the other one dropping off in that's the right. coverage. And I'll tell you what, you've got to have some pretty talented athletic ends to, send, to let them go back in, into pass coverage like that. And you saw Cuff was, was step to, for step with that guy, so he's, he's got the speed to do it. A beautiful night here at Mount Carmel area. Couldn't ask for better football weather, not real hot, and ice breeze blowing. The field is in excellent condition. I mean, it's a carpet out there right now. Third down and 11. Tried to quick hand off, big tackle, and the fumble on the play, recovered by Malakoski. Oh, but they're calling it fourth down. No way, no. I'm sorry that, on nope. that one. He lost the ball standing. He yeah. never. He never even had the ball. Well, look at this way, guys. It's the first game, so you got That's your right. first poor call out of the way now. <laughs> we got everything, everything set now. We're all ready to go. Even they had to get the jitters out. Oh, that was he, he blew that one, but that's going to happen. Boyer in punt formation for the Blue Raiders. Sebus and Montgomery deep for the Red Tornadoes. Kicks on the way in the direction of Montgomery. Takes it, fumbles it on the 19, picks it up. Takes it to the left side. Big block from Malakoski. Gets up to about the 47-yard line. Nice run back by Matt Montgomery. I'll tell you what, the specialty teams on the on the punt receiving end, are, we're doing an excellent job. We have we have two beautiful run backs, one for about 12, 15 yards. That one there for about 20 and got it right back to the line of scrimmage again. You, know, you got so many kids here that can do so many different things. I mean, you see Montgomery back, you got Sebas back there. I mean, that's, and you know, every one of them's out here, and you're gonna, they're going to find that special spot that, that they really excel in, and that's how a team comes and, and gels together. Steve Sinkovich, and he's tackled at the line of scrimmage. Tackle made by number 54 from Tamaqua, Kevin Bailey. You know, and again, you know, you, people might be sitting there watching this game saying, well, you know, what's going on, this and that. And again, Bob said it at the beginning. We have, you know, Jonathan is the only starter back in that original position. There's Malakoski who played defense all year. Now he's on offensive tackle. Whitovich going to bootleg out around the right side. Big tackle made by number 61, but he's going to get called for a face mask. Ballier got his hand hooked in Whitovich's face mask. Again, a big rush from Tamaqua. They're just coming, Wayne, right yes, now. Yes, they are. They're just they're just releasing, and, and they want to see who's going to block them, who's going to pick them up. 29, Josh Paracella comes into the Red Tornado lineup, and uh, we didn't mention Josh in the starting lineups, but Josh, he did very well in the scrimmages at catching the ball. He caught a lot of passes during the scrimmages. Paracella goes out at the uh, wide receiver position. Whitovich, straight drop back, big rush, screen pass to John Veach. Good blocking, gets it down to about the 29-yard line. Good play by the Red Tornadoes. And what the coaching staff saw there was, Tamak was just blitzing everybody. So That's right. you had to get them a little honest. And how many times last year did we see that, that screen pass come into play and, and pick up some good yardage? And here's a case here where now you you got to hold your defense back a little bit. You, you know, one or two more plays like that, you're down on the goal line. First down and 10 for the Red Tornadoes from the 28-yard line. Steve Sinkovich off the right side, pulls his way down to about the 22-yard line. Good blocking that time on the right side of the Red Tornado line. Well, sometimes, sometimes you need a little play like that screen pass to get to your, 
get you moving, get everybody in the groove here. They, they look 100% better all of a sudden offensively than in that first series where they, where they lost uh, 16 yards and, and then finally punted. Second down, five yards to go. 521 left in the first. Pitch back to Bailey. Takes it out around the left side, finds some running room, and gets down to about the 14-yard line. And you're going to see a lot of that this year. You're going to see Al Bailey in the lineup. You're going to see Josh Paracella. There's just a lot of people can play on this Red Tornado offense. Again, you can see you can see a little bit of experience there. Bailey carrying the ball, you know, uh, quite a bit last year in, in the second half of each varsity game. And you can see him waiting for his, his blocker coming across there. And as soon as he takes the defensive end down, he's cutting up behind him for the first down. First down and 10, the ball on the 14-yard line. Hand off to Mike Zinkovich. He gets his way down to the 9-yard line. Oh, well, they've moved it back to the 10-yard line. 32, Russie Lashinsky comes in now uh, to the Red Tornado lineup. This will usually be a power offense where they use the two fullbacks with Mike Sinkovich and Rusty Lashinsky, and then Steve Sinkovich as the tailback. Very good. You saw this before. Oh, <laughs> I have scouted. Goes to Sinkovich off the right side. That's Steve Sinkovich down to about the six yard line. Let's take a moment to talk about Lashinsky, a, a real success story. Lost, for all intents and purposes, two years of football to a, a near catastrophic knee injury. One that, uh, that is very difficult to come back from. Worked his butt off for two years and comes back here and, and comes in as a captain in his senior year. And that's, that's really says something for that kid's character. Pitch back to Bailey. No running room to the left side. Now he sprints it to the corner and gets maybe to about the five yard line. Bailey, we remind you, you're watching uh, a sophomore uh, play that position. Bailey played last year as a freshman and showed such promise. Bailey, has, Bailey is, is the kind of kid you, you like to see in that tailback spot, and, and he has that size and the speed. You know, the, the, the true tailback uh, size. We have another tackle in there. Number 63, Mike Ravito has taken Jason Malakoski's place at the left tackle. Fourth down and four. Tries it up the middle to Bailey. He won't get it. He gains about two yards. This one will go to Tamaqua. Now my thought here is with, with the Blue Raiders, they've got to be thinking to themselves, is this a good idea or not? And then they've steadily marched back. No, oh, time out for a measurement. measurement. They moved them up. They, Al did real good at stretching it out right there. He looks a little short, but we're looking at a well, real, it did real hard it, angle Right, here. we have a bad angle. When he fell, it looked like it was back closer. Ooh. Not by much. Not by much. Blue Raiders will take over first down and 10 from about the four yard line. Now, they've got a lot of pressure on them right now, although they did not allow any points. Uh, they're pinned deep in their own end, and they have not shown much offensively so far this evening at the 307 left in the first period. So they've got to be careful what they do here. They, they, they really need to do is grind a first down or two out, if nothing else, so they can punt the ball in a little better position. Well, they split two receivers wide left. They go out of the eye formation. Just try it to Boyer off the right side. Bounces his way for about no gain. <laughs> now he's at the four yard line still. They'll move it. He gained about a half a yard or so, I guess. You'll see. Chris Cuff was on the initial hit, and then a, quite a few other tornadoes in there on the tackle. 2.46 on the clock, no score here from the Silver Bowl in Mount Carmel. Actually, it's showing second and 10. They gave him no gain on that play. Gonna try a quarterback no. sneak, and that's not going anywhere. In fact, close safety. to a safety, safety, and it is a safety for the Red Tornado defense. They score the first two points of the year. That's, I, I knew they were in trouble down there. They well, were too close. Yeah, you know what happened. It looked like the ball was coming to the left side, and it looked like the quarterback bobbled it coming out of the center, and, and he sort of just cradled it in his chest. But by that time, everybody was on top of him. Yeah, big, big Red is showing tremendous penetration on the line right Defense now. Defense is, is excellent. They're, they're hitting the back as he's being handed the ball, and that, that doesn't make for a, a big evening offensively for Tamaka right now. They've got to adjust 
to whatever we're doing on the line. Now, one of the things we are doing on the line, they're not going to just overpowering. We're, we're, well, we're bigger, <laughs> but, right. but we're, we're not used to this. But we're actually bigger across the line right now defensively compared to them on offense. And last year it was funny. We a lot of times we'd win to the game and be so overmatched with size, you know, and, and still romp around. But this time you go with a decided uh, uh, size advantage almost in every game. I'm sure that as we play this down. And again, you know, everybody, we all have to be patient here. You know, there's defense now scoring scoring a safety for us. And Tamako kicking on a 20-yard line. But offensively, again, you have to, defensively, we have everybody back on that line and right. in the linebacking crew, you know. Fayash will kick off for the Blue Raiders. Sends one in the direction of Bailey. Breaks a hole, finds another opening, and he's gone. Al Bailey. Touchdown, Red Tornadoes. Some yeah. great blocking, and what was fantastic, if you watch Bailey as he was going up, he just cut in and out yep. every every other step, looking for the hole and cutting behind his blockers. Great run by Al Bailey. Uh, if, you, if you're Tamaqua, that's the worst thing you can do. Oh. You let First you let a safety, and then you let them score on the kick. There is no worse set of circumstances in football than what they just allowed happen to them. Red Tornadoes will now try the extra point. Montgomery will hold, and Mike Sinkovich will kick. Jonathan Else, the long snap. Snaps back, it's good. Kicks up, good. and it's good. With 2.11 left in the first quarter, the score, the Red Tornadoes, nine. The Blue Raiders, nothing. And that's, you know, it, it, it's funny. I mean, we say this and everybody says this, but that's that's Mount Carmel area football. That's a lightning strike score. That's right. I mean, how many hundreds of times have we watched that happen? I mean, everything's kind of lulled together here. The offenses aren't doing much. Defensively, we're, we're overpowering them. We began to move a little on offense. And there you have a nine-point span in what, seven seconds? I that mean, was it. You know what I mean, that's, <laughs> as, that's as quickly as you can get two scores on the board as you can ever see. One of, one of the things we talked about at Supper Club last night, also unusual for us and nicely unusual for us, is that we came in injury-free. There were no injuries to report of on this football team as we started the season tonight. Well, the only injury was Aaron Geary. He hurt his shoulder. It's it's torn again. He will not be able to. Uh, he was supposed to be the long snapper and had practiced for the last two weeks at long snapping. And uh, but he the, is playing. He's playing. He's, playing guard he's able position to play now, guard, right but he's not able to do yeah. any of the snapping. So the bus took over that position. Yeah. <laughs> Forty-two. Mike Sinkovich will kick off from the right hash mark. Good kick by Sinko. Bounces down <laughs> oh. around the nine. If it goes out into the Ooh. end zone, it's a touchback. You talk about two feet. Yeah, he, There's two feet right there. He was certainly <laughs> gambling on that one. He wasn't gambled he? on that one. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you let that thing go, and then you turn around and you start sweating bullets, wondering, is that thing going to cross the goal line or isn't it? <laughs> Because if it doesn't, I'm going to look pretty bad right now. <laughs> and I'm going to look real bad with, with about eight guys on yeah. top of me. <laughs> first down, Blue Raiders from the 20-yard line. 2-11 left in the first quarter. Fayash, quick pitch to Boyer. Not going oh. anywhere. Brian Detry, the initial hit made by 71. Dalkus just read it very nice yes, from he. defensive end and then finished off by Brian Detry, the strong safety. I'll tell you what, there, there's a, an example of a, a good defensive end. He strings that play out all the way for uh, your other trailing, your linebacker coming over, your tackle coming over to make, to make the tackle. Well, they gained a yard on that one, guys. They're making some forward progress here. All right, Mike Zinkovich comes out at defensive tackle, and in comes number 55, Jeff Homiak. Homiak's a junior, 5'11", 235 pounds. Pitch going right. Boyer's going to throw. Broken up nice, read nicely by the free safety, Matt Montgomery. Yeah, that, there was no chance to complete the pass. He knew exactly where it was going. There was only one receiver in the pattern. He had him all the way, and he, he was lucky he wasn't intercepted. T 
Tamaqua, it's funny, Tamaqua had again, now Matt, Matt Montgomery is the, the, the lone returner into that defensive backfield. So if you're smart and you're Tamaqua, you're looking at this, you're saying, we've got to pass into that secondary. But I'll tell you what, take a look at some of the, just the athletic talent. Uh, right. They're new. Yes, they're going to make a few mental errors along the way. But I'll tell you what, it's no picnic thinking you're going to throw into those four because it's, it's not going to be pretty. Third down, nine yards to go for the Blue Raiders. Quick pass, hits the tight end, first down at about the 34-yard line. Tackle made by Sebus, but a nice pass to number 81, Holmberg. That was Tawakwa's initial first down of the football game with a minute 44 in the first period. Ball's on the 35-yard line. Fayash to Boyer. Oh, and he's not going anywhere off the right side. Tackle made by 47, Steve Sinkovich. Steve Sinkovich. Also in there helping out, 71, Dan Dalkus. That's a loss of, of at least a yard, a little, maybe a yard and a half loss there. Second up, second, I'd say 12. The scoreboard's saying 11, but it's, it's one long yard there if it's 11. One minute left in the first quarter. We see a, a, a Coach Williams trademark here. So many kids playing in and out, platooning. So many come on and off on offense and defense, which is amazing in high school football. But that's his style, and it's working. Oh, oh. great hit by 71, Dalkus. If, I, if I'm the running back there, I've got to get in that and ask who was supposed to touch 71. <laughs> <laughs> you can get hurt ugly if you keep leaving him open. Oh, that was as square as a hit as you're going to take. <laughs> My goodness. Tough defensive line this year. Of course, you're looking at Malakoski, uh, as talked about throughout the region for postseason honors on, on a state level. So, uh, Sinkovich on a state level. So, you, you may have a young team, but you've got an extremely talented one. Try the quick pass out to Powell. Could be a lateral. Recovered by. I don't know who recovered well, that. Well, it was a lateral Everybody because had it they're, for a while. they're looking right now. It's yeah. fourth down for Tamaqua, but it was a lateral. And again, the person who, who broke that play up was Jason Malakowski getting up in his face so the quarterback couldn't see his receiver and the receiver couldn't see the ball. If, if you're Tamaqua, I mean, and I know this is early. You're, you're at the end of the first quarter. Uh, Big Red, of course, in the lead. I'll do your job quick while I'm on the roll. Go ahead. Nothing, but... If you're in the Tamaqua area, your coaches are up in that booth up there, you've got to start thinking that maybe we're not going to go to our right because Malakoski is, is absolutely shutting the entire – and Cuff. Right. You know, he should, they're both shutting the entire side down. Nothing is going to the right side. Now, unfortunately, because of the way most offenses are, are designed, most offenses are running to the right. They're, they're favoring their right. So you shut down the right side of an offense, and you're, you're going to have a long evening. And the Blue Raiders are beginning to feel that right now. They are having no success. And they're having very limited success to the left side. Uh, well, on the left-hand side, you got Danny Dalkus, who just made the, yeah. the great hit on the slashback yeah. coming back this way, and Mike Sinkovich over there. And, and anchoring the whole middle again with, with a lot of experience is, is Jeff Evans. Yeah. Boyer back in punt formation. Snaps back. Kicks away. Nice kick. Taken by Montgomery at the 29-yard line. Cuts up the middle at the 29. Now there's some running room. Montgomery gets to the outside. Sebus blocks. Good block by Nick Sebus. Springs Montgomery and gets him down to the 37-yard line. Great block by Sebus that time to get Montgomery. There was another great block on the 38-yard yeah. line, and I didn't see who did it. That, they, they had the wall set. They, they had made their – you know when the wall is set when you see everybody turn to you. Everybody turned and faced us, meaning the wall was behind them. He had, all he had to do was get there. He did, and it's – Big Red, Big Red has, has just a way of playing that, that return <laughs> that is right. really something. You don't see many other teams do that. First down and 10, Red Tornadoes. Whitevich sets the Tornadoes. Up the middle to Mike Sinkovich, going nowhere again. Gets about one yard. That was, was that Sinkovich or that was uh, Lashinsky? Oh, uh, Lashinsky. 32, Karen, yeah. Rusty Lashinsky. 32. 
I could only see the two. Yeah, I, I knew you were, <laughs> you were looking at the two there. Bailey comes in, and then 59, Aaron Geary comes out. I'm trying to see who goes in at guard. 74, Matt O'Brien goes in at guard for the Red Tornadoes. O'Brien, a sophomore, six foot, 190 pounds. Yeah, if you take a look down this roster at some of these sizes, 210, 190, you know, 185, go over here, 200, 250, 235. You're talking about a pretty big high school football team with those weights. John Veach split to the left for the Red Tornadoes. Paracela split to the right. Whitovich, quick pass to Veach. Has him breaking, catches it under the 11, on the 11 yard line. Nice catch by John Veach. Oh, fabulous catch. He stayed with it all the way. And here, guys, let me remind everybody here. You're talking about a freshman, 5'9", 170 pounds, stepping into some of the biggest shoes that there are at Mount Carmel area, his brother. And, and he's really acquitted himself well so far in this first opening game. Timeout called by Tamakwa. We had heard so much about him. There was, you know, I mean, and, and you've seen him play through the little leagues and stuff, and you, you got to know that once he got to this level, he was going to be something special, and he will be. And, and it, it's funny because he's, he's a freshman coming in with so much talent surrounding him. You know, he doesn't have to carry the load. He doesn't have to do anything, really. Just kind of pick his spot and excel in it when you got all the rest of those guys around him. So and, it's, it's the future looks so much better when you see all these players standing out there. And you know what's really nice about that whole thing is that if you look at Brett and Jonathan, they're two different type of football players all together. He doesn't have to try to be his brother. All he's going to do is just be exactly what he has to be, and that's himself. Yeah. And that's the type of kid he is. He's coming in with strength. He's, he's not the shifty. Uh, not the same footwork. No, he doesn't. No, have to, but he has the strength and he has the power yeah. to do what needs to be done. And throw the speed along. Oh, and, and the speed. And, yeah, First down and 10, Red Tornadoes from the 13-yard line. Wojtovic to Steve Zinkovic. 74 in on the tackle. He got about a, maybe a four or five yard gain, but a good tackle made by Jamie Turner. O'Brien comes back out of the game and so does Steve Sinkovich. A lot of platooning going on. Officials timeout. And which is good because what you what you want to do, if you look at the people that are coming in and off the field, they're playing both ways. You're, you're, you know, it, it's not a very hot night, uh, but I'm sure, you know, the, the, uh, the strength of the players just quite isn't what it should be looking down the road a little bit when you are running them both ways all the time. Bailey comes in there in place of Steve Sinkovich. Second down and eight. Wojtovich back to pass, big rush. They got him at about the 21 yard line. Nice rush that time by number 88, which is Dave Fagley. I think he came from the uh, defensive end position. He was in really quick that time. He came through the gap and, and was on him in a hurry. <clears throat> not much, not much uh, Wojtovich could do with that play, but a big loss. <clears throat> Third and 20 now for Big Red. Wojtovich sets the Red Tornadoes. Draw a play to Steve Zinkovich. Breaks it to the left side and still on his feet at about the 11 yard line, but that will only get down to about where the first down markers were. So it'll be fourth down and about 11 to go. Interesting call now here. They're on the balls being set down at the 12, thir what, 13, or, yeah, 12 yard line. Big Red calls a timeout. And I think this is going to be a field goal. They might want to kick the yeah. ball. That's yeah. what I thought they, they were the talking shoe about. Probably it. a good time to do it. Sure it is. I mean, might it's the well. first game. Give it a start. See what happens. Yeah, I thought they were talking about it down there when, when they, they saw he didn't make the first down. I wonder what they were going to call. 
Well, it's not like he can't do it. One I mean, of these days, we have to get Mike a zipper shoe, though, that he can zip it on and zip it off. <laughs> he certainly has the leg to, to do this thing, so it's not like you're taking a long shot here. Montgomery will hold for this field goal, which will take place from about the uh, probably the 19-yard line, which will make it a 29-yard field goal. Trouble with us is we don't see many field goals because we don't get around to doing it much. You usually just take it into the end zone. It's not a lot of thought about having to kick a field goal ever. Snaps back, good snap from Els. Kicks up. Nice kick. He got it. And it's good. 29-yard field goal for 42, Mike Sinkovich. My goodness, he could have he got another 15 yards out of that baby. No problem. And again, you know, the big thing here is keeping your head down, kicking through the ball. And that's exactly what he did. 12-0, Red Tornadoes in the lead. I think what we're seeing, Warren, is just going to take time for that young offensive line to. to it, it's a tough, you, oh, a lot of responsibility absolutely. there. And, you, and, you've uh, got to get used to each other, is what it comes down to. You need to know what what everybody can do. You need to know where they're going to be, and that doesn't come. We just get spoiled a little bit because we've seen so many reload teams that, that had been around for so long. You're seeing a group here that's getting their, some of them their first chances to really start a football game and to play a whole season. And you're going to see them, you know, in, two, in game two, three, four, they'll, they will be amazing by the time they get into the meat of the schedule. Forty-two, Mike Zinkovich to kick off. Taken by the short back, 23. Borowski knocked out of bounds. 81, 21. 21, Matt Montgomery also in there, 25. Is this 25 or 26 Seven. coming here? 26. Seven. <laughs> okay, Ronnie on. Lentini was in there, and also 27, Matt Van Doren. So we, I saw them both coming out of there. So Certainly covered the gamut That's of that right. one, didn't we? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're this first game for us, too. And when you're used to seeing them wearing 14 and 10 and all those uh, scrimmage <laughs> numbers that they wear, 8.58 left in the first half. Fayash sets the Blue Raiders, tries it to Boyer. He cuts it out to the left side, read very nicely by the cornerback five. Nick Sebas knocks him out of bounds after a four-yard gain. Second down, six yards to go. Fayash. Big rush from Malakoski. <laughs> Fayash, yeah, and that's flag. intentional that grounding. There was Drop nobody flag, there. Nobody. I can't believe they didn't call that. Yeah, that's intentional grounding, ladies and gentlemen. That's a, a textbook play. If you see it anywhere else, that would be called intentional grounding. <laughs> it's not going to be called here, but that was what intentional grounding is. <laughs> You have no receiver within 20 yards of the football when you let it go. That's intentional grounding. Well, I did see someone at 19 and a half yards. yards. So that, that, that must have been it. That's what he was on our side. <laughs> Third down. And about six yards, um, about seven yards to go for the Blue Raiders. Fayash going to throw again. Big rush. Incomplete over the head. Nice coverage by the Red Tornadoes over there anyway. Rusty Lashinsky was there, but that one wasn't going anywhere. That, that was an extremely odd play, though. That looked like a screen, screen, but he wasn't where the screen was. He was on the far side. Yeah. I don't know if he was in the wrong spot. Because if you notice the quarterback, he was looking around for him, wondering where he, where he was at. I think they'll have a little talk about that one on the sideline. Because <laughs> you can get a quarterback killed when you're not where the screen's supposed to be. Number 10, Boyer to punt for the Blue Raiders. Good kick. This one's time. taken by Sebus. Hands off to Montgomery, brings it around the left side. 
still running at about the 39-yard line, still on its feet and out of bounds at about the 35-yard line. Another play you're used to seeing at Mount Carmel. Montgomery looks good, though, doesn't he? He really does. not he, He's a kid that grew so much through the year last year. When, when you saw him begin the year, you know, and he came through the middle of the year, and by the time we got into the playoffs, and he was a force to be reckoned with in free safety. He really was. Sophomore Nick Sebus, number five, comes in a quarterback for the Red Tornadoes. Uh oh, we're having a ball change here. No, we're not having a ball change. We have no ball at all. <laughs> <laughs> it's harder to play that way. <laughs> Sebus, gonna roll to his right. Looking for a little running room, nowhere to go. Great pursuit by the red, by the Blue Raiders that time. Initial hit made by 54, which was Kevin Bailey. He couldn't get around the end that time. Uh, the difference here from what we gather is that, is that in, in the two quarterbacks, size for openers, uh, Seba's coming in much bigger, and he's faster, uh, the runner, but probably why he told which the better passer, the better setup guy. Second down, 12 yards to go. Sebas on the option. Oh, nobody Keeps there. Keeps it himself. Keep going. Keeps going with the ball and gets it down nice. to about the 24-yard line. That'll be about a yard short of a first down, but a nice run by number five, Nick Sebas. That's a, that was a, a good play, yeah. taking a second snap like that. You see you have the whole sideline to run with. Don't even look at the pitch, man. You just take off and run oh, for the sidelines. Oh, it is a first lines. down. That first is, down from the 24-yard line. The, the thing you'll see he'll learn there is, is the decision to when he was going to decide to keep it. When it comes a little earlier like right. that with his speed, then he has a chance for a touchdown. You know, he was still waiting to see where he was pitching, and that's something you, you can't teach him. He has to learn that on his own. Hand off to Steve Sinkovich. Gets his way down to about the 13-yard line. Nice hole that time by the left side of the Red Tornado line. Malakoski was there on the left side, and a good block by 67. Wytovich. If you could put 25 pounds on Sebus, he'd be a spinning image of, of uh, Vic from last yeah. year. You know, the same height, the same kind of build, but just thinner. <laughs> he doesn't have that weight on him yet. Well, that was actually Volkler and, and Wytovich on the left side here. Good block by Jamie. First down and 10, Red Tornadoes from the 13-yard line. Hand off to Mike Sinkovich. Big rush that time by the Blue Raiders. They look like they're trying to block the middle up. They just don't want anything to go up the yeah. middle right now. Yeah, they, they are tough in the middle. They're, and they seem to be tougher on, on what would be their left side. They're, it's tough running on the left side. And the, the right side seems a little softer for some reason right now. We seem to be making some, uh, some long yardage plays to the right of them. Timeout here called by the Blue Raiders. Has one of their players injured. 6.43 left in the first half. 12-0, Mount Carmel area in the lead. Like somebody got, got a hand through his face mask. Yeah. The old, the old poke in the eye routine. Oh, I hate that. You, know, you see the face mask and you think to yourself, how the heck did somebody's finger get through there? I mean, you're wondering, how does that happen? <laughs> yeah, the worst part was you see him doing that, but if you looked in our huddle, somebody was shaking their hand because their finger, <laughs> <laughs> their finger had a hurt like heck from going through there. <laughs> Sebus takes the snap. Gonna go to the right, pitches oh. back to uh, Sinkovich. High on the pitch and recovered by the Blue Raiders recover the ball in about the 24 yard line. Like he caught Sinkovich by surprise right. that time. I don't but, think he thought he was gonna But you know what, that's a play it. too that, that eventually can work. It's just gonna take time. There you got some young guys out here just learning that position again and yeah. it's, it's gonna take a little time. He got the ball high and a little bit behind him but Sinkovich right. hadn't, hadn't looked at him for a little while. Right. He felt he was gonna right. keep it. And he got surprised a little bit, but you know the option is the hardest thing to learn, and that 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 change between two players to know what they're each doing is, is difficult to learn. Well, first down and timeout call by the Blue Raiders. They're missing somebody. <laughs> so the jitters are on both offenses tonight for a little bit, Warren. Yeah. Well, 
Uh, Tamaqua, obviously, they're coming up against a much a much better defense than, than they had hoped for, I'm sure, in their opening game. Uh, this this defense didn't have any opening game jitters so far. They've completely controlled the line right, of scrimmage. Right, that's true. So, I mean, if, if, if you're Tamaqua, you, you're, it's not the best thing to open up with us with the defense that we've got on the field right now. Offensively, I, I have to say to them, it, it, it's 12 nothing. But despite the fact they haven't moved the ball much, they look one heck of a lot better than they did last year in the opening game. And, and in previous years, a thousand times better. So right. you've got to say that this program is beginning to come together you know, in some way, shape, and form. Of course, they broke a 26-game losing streak last year. So it, it doesn't happen overnight. If you're the Tamaqua Blue Raiders, you've got to look down the season and say to yourself, I mean, Mount Carmel's a blip in the beginning of the, of the, the year, which is hard to get over. But... Looking down the schedule, they've got some games they're going to win, and, and they don't look that bad at all right now. They really don't. Fayaz going to try the option. Pitches the Boyer, going oh, nowhere. Oh. Detry had him first, and Cuffey finishes him off at about the 16-yard line. And Boyer said, why did you do that? Yeah, I was just going to say. <laughs> why did you throw me the ball? <laughs> I mean, there were three guys standing there. He caught the ball and was like, uh-oh. <laughs> now it's your turn. <laughs> yeah, so don't do that again. <laughs> Brings, that's a five-yard <laughs> loss for the Raiders on bringing up a second and 15. <laughs> 554 left in the first half. And again, there that's an option play there. I mean, same same with them as with us. Their timing, they need to get that that timing between them. First of all, he was too far back and too far he was too close to the quarterback on that play. Say so, yeah, gonna try throwing. And that one gets nowhere. Sebas was good. Sebas. Good coverage, though. He was he was with the – he didn't see the ball, no. but he was with the receiver. He turned, though. He almost caught he it. Yes, with he the did. When he right. made the turn, yep. he almost got it. He was it. with the receiver all the way. Yeah, I, I think the secondary here is going to surprise a lot of teams. I think they were thinking it's going to be cake this year. We're going to start throwing the ball over. Yeah. But I don't think that's going to happen. I really don't. And you got Montgomery back there who tells everybody where to go, where to be. You know, that's invaluable to have a kid like that back And there you know help. what's great? If you look back to last year, last year Montgomery was the new guy on the block, mm -hmm. and, and Brett Veach and, and the rest of them were telling him exactly what to do, mm -hmm. and now he's able to turn around and tell everybody else. Big rush Ooh. by Balakoski. Fayash is running for his life, and he's run down by number 80, Chris Cuff. Good job by Cuff that time. I'll tell you what, Cuffy has speed like you can't believe coming out of that oh, defensive end position. I'll tell you what, you're looking at Malakoski with a lot of speed. You're talking uh, Jason Malakoski here right. is uh, 250. 250. 250 pounds. Well, Cuff is 200 pounds. So you, you know you got some kids there. Uh, Daukas, 205 pounds. I said this is this is an extremely large team for for Mount Carmel area right now. Definitely a punt formation that Tamaqua doesn't want. Boyer gets the snap, kicks away. Everybody's backing off of it, and it will be down at about the 41 yard line. That was a poor kick, and and it didn't get quite out to where the receivers were. Got to remind everybody that this is WKMC team. Quarterback Josh Paracella comes in at wide receiver. Bailey, oh, a big split here. Four receivers out for the Red Tornadoes. And flags on the play. Somebody twitched. Yep. We want to we want to say thank you to Industrial Maintenance and Construction for our truck, our our, our uh, control room <laughs> truck, which it's pretty is awesome, isn't sitting it? Sitting down below us right now, all painted up with WKMC TV on it, and it's going to be taking us to the games with it, with carpeting and and, and uh, upholstered seating and, <laughs> and a control room. I mean, it's unbelievable. And we want to say say thank you to Frank Losky. He uh, donated the truck's use on on game nights. And uh, that's, that's kind of going above and beyond the call of duty. Steve Sinkovic takes it off the left side. He's at the 30 and knocked out of bounds at the 25-yard line. Nice run by Steve Sinkovic. Tell you what, it was really nice. You look at the end of that run, the last 10 yards. He saw the, the tackler coming up, their safety coming up. He squared his shoulders up with the sideline. He was waiting for the hit. And, and that, that is really good. You're not, he's not looking for the out-of-bounds marker. He's looking to run someone over. Lashinsky comes in now at fullback for the Red Tornadoes. Four wide receivers, Sebus the sophomore at quarterback. 
Sebas back to pass. Looks downfield, rolls to his right. Keep it. He'll keep the ball and go himself. First down, Nick Sebas, and he's knocked out of bounds after he gets the first down. Yeah, knocked, that's kind of knocked down when he was out of bounds. That's something that can happen there too with Sebas. When he goes to pass, he's a threat to run all the time. Yeah, yeah he's, he definitely has the speed that, that can turn the corner on him. And he's just, he, again, the, the two quarterbacks are, are two exciting young men. And yep. they, they both bring different things to, to the game and different ways of doing things to the offense, but both of them capable quarterbacks. And, and what better what better thing can you have going into the season and have two good quarterbacks? I mean, my goodness. We're just making this too easy for Whitey. You know it is. 4.02 left in the first quarter, or in the first half. First down, red tornadoes from about the 13-yard line. Blitz coming, Sebus ah. hands off to Steve Sinkovich, but this could be offsides against Tamaqua. Dead ball foul, illegal procedure against the Red Tornado. Somebody jumped. 74 into the lineup. Uh, Matt O'Brien takes the right guard position of Aaron Geary. Nashinsky's being sent in with the play. Sinkovich will come to the sidelines. Steve. Steve Sinkovich, right. I've got the Stephen White thing down pat now. I know I was a little confused last year once in a while, but I've got it down pat now. As long as they keep numbers on, I'm going to know exactly who they are. Sebas, straight drop back, big rush. He can outrun most, but he's mm. not going to. Oh, yes, he is. He's still on his feet. He's still running. Boom. Good block. Sebas still on his feet and back down to about the 12-yard line. Nice job and by Sebas. And that's going to be a penalty against the Tamaqua Blue Raiders. That's going to be an unsportsmanlike yes, hitting him is. out of bounds. That'll tack on. They're at what? The Where are they at? The 12? Down about the 12, so it'll be down to the 6-yard six six line. line uh, first down and 6 to go for the touchdown with the, with the unsportsmanlike penalty coming out of bounds on the Blue Raiders. I'll tell you what. There's, there's Josh Baricella. Uh, what a number block. 29, 135 pounds. He was down in the end zone and came back when Sebas was rounding the corner to hit one of the linemen. <laughs> and so, it was a heck of a block. And it was a, a great block, and it's what sprung Sebas for the first down. Here we go. First down and goal to go from the five-yard line for the Red Tornadoes. We're missing somebody here, guys. Tight end Pete Avellino wasn't in. I don't know what. On the line for the Red Tornadoes now, 63, Ravito at left tackle, 67, Whitovich at guard, 75, Else is the center, 74, Matt O'Brien is the guard, we don't, and 72, Volkler. We don't know what we know what we were doing there, but Tamaqua's getting even worse shape. <laughs> they have no idea who they're supposed to have on the field. This is a power. Going to go to Bailey. Off the right side. Good blocking and gets him down to about the two-yard line. And a tough run, too. Yeah, I'll tell good you what, run and good blocking. You're looking, you're looking at Bailey here for a little bit of speed, but there's a case there. You're getting down in the five, seven-yard line area where you're looking for somebody to carry the ball with a little bit of bulk. And there's Bailey showing a little bit of speed to get through the hole quick but putting his shoulder down to take the tacklers on. Three-yard line. Paracelli in, in the lineup now, and he's over going to line up at wide receiver. Third down and three yards to go for the Red Tornadoes. Sebas at quarterback. Timeout. Officials timeout. They're, they're, tomorrow well, tomorrow having, either, they're having a heck of a time here right now. Either kids coming in and out like that. or or there uh, any sign of blood, you have to be out of the game right yeah. now. Yeah, so. it wasn't. That was the second time it happened now in consecutive plays with them. Though they, they're having a heck of a time with their with their lineup. Third down and goal to go for the Red Tornadoes. Sebus pitches back to Bailey out around the left side, he's and in. he's going to find the corner for a touchdown. Oh, he's in. <laughs> Bailey has some speed. Yeah, he does. He took, you know, he stopped almost, took a stutter step, looked to see what was going to happen there, decided the corner where he wanted to go, and he had the speed to do it. Now, he's, an, he's an exciting player. You saw only flashes of him as a freshman last year. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, you'll see a lot from him in, in the next couple of years. And, and you know what's nice? I think he's another one that has bulked up quite yeah. a few pounds yeah. from last year, if you look at the records. Extra point attempted by Mike Sinkovich. Holder Matt Montgomery, the snap by John Else. It's good, the kick is up, and it's good. With 2.55 left in the first half, the score, the Red Tornadoes 19, the Blue Raiders nothing. 
back here, and uh, that was a tape change. That takes place once in a while. Jesus, first time I ever But I heard forget that. where we were, That's don't you? first time I ever heard I know. That. <laughs> Must have been a long half. <laughs> I think that was how long-winded we were at the beginning of the I mean, game. I they always told us they were using tapes and all. I never believed them. <laughs> I didn't know how this thing worked. Mike Zinkovich will kick off for the Red Tornadoes. What happened to the uh, to the on-field experiment? Do I have to go down to halftime and have a talk well, with him? We've been, yes, you do, What's because we've been anyway? watching Where for our he? analyst to come to his microphone, and he hasn't come there. He's, so. like, the, he's like the reluctant analyst. He's sort of down there on the 15-yard line. I knew he line. wasn't going to stop and talk to us. I knew it, but I'm going to see what I can do at halftime. Good kick by Sinkovich. Has it bouncing. Picked up on about the 18-yard line by Boyer. And 29, Josh Paracella with the initial hit, helped out by 28, Bailey. And there's still another guy down under there, Wayne. Yeah, 25, Jonathan Veacher. 26. <laughs> 26. Well, we're having a rough time with that five <laughs> and six. You guys are tough that, here, that's, that is Matt 20, Montgomery. It is. It's 26, right. Ronnie Lentini. Uh, Ronnie Good job, Lentini. Ronnie. Yeah. <laughs> we got the 26, 27, 28, and 29 in there every time. So just, that's it. <laughs> First down to Makwa, 2.45 left in the first half. Fayash keeps the ball himself fumble. going fumble. nowhere. Fumble, fumble on the play, recovered oh. by the Red Tornadoes. He had the ball knocked out of his hand there. He never got it really in control, and it was gone. Looked like Jeff Evans, Detry in there, and Rusty Lashinsky. I think Rusty with 32. Rusty yeah. recovered it. Of course, Jeff is up to his usual antics. You know, he's the kind of guy that when they go home and they're sitting at home, they're thinking, you know, I keep remembering this red jersey all the time. <laughs> and it's him. I mean, he's like the eternal pest in the inside of the line there. Every time you turn around, he's doing something. First down and 10, red tornadoes. He gives the center a nightmare for three days after you play him. Sivas remains at quarterback. The lone back for the red tornadoes, 42, Mike Sinkovich. Sivas rolls. Oh, tight end just to deal. Oh, Sebas breaks it to the left side, finds some running room, cuts it back at about the 16-yard line, Penalty. and a block made way back here. That was a dumb block by somebody because it happened back at the 34-yard line as Nick Sebas was running. So the Red Tornadoes have to watch that. You can't hit somebody 15 yards back. And he's shown some, some real, real prowess right now. I'll tell you what, it, uh, if you take a look at that replay, the, all the block was was a stand-up block, and it, and it was to the back. It wasn't even right. below the waist. But after, after your runner's gone 15 yards, you have to learn to just, that's it. It's not going to do you any good, Wayne, right? Right. First down and, oh, let's see. This will be a first and 25 for the Red Tornadoes. That, that defensive end just came in untouched from the right side here, though. Yeah, You're going to have to get the somebody defensive missed end. Him. Yeah, somebody missed him coming by. All right. Sabus, straight drop back. Good block that time. Still blocks. Sebas finding time. Now he's going to run and scramble again. Now he finds some running room to the 42, to the 32. Sebas turns on the burners and is tackled at about the 18-yard line. But he is an exciting tired. runner, isn't he? <laughs> I, he? I think at the end there, he just felt he was tired. <laughs> he had two great blocks there as he, as he rolled to the right. Jonathan Else had a good block, and Aaron Geary, both of them good blocks to get him loose. My goodness, he's an exciting football player. He really is. And a Tamako player down, right near where the action, he was right close to where the tackle was made there. And now they're going to give Sebas a breather here, and they're going to bring Wytovich <laughs> in. So. I, think he, I think he got tired at the end of that <laughs> one there. Great run by Nick Sebas. <laughs> I'll tell you what, he's putting some yardage on, this, yeah. on, the, on the board for himself, isn't he? He absolutely is. I'll give him that. Uh, he's having a whale of a first half. Two-minute mark of the first half. How often do you see this luxury where you can take him out and put the other guy back in and not miss a beat? I mean, we're talking about an embarrassment of riches going here for a while. Well, two minutes, I think you're going to see the ball go up in the air here. 
You at think, some point. You yep. Think, you yep. Think that's what's going to happen? I think it's going to happen. Anyway, your football mind is like a trap. I mean, nothing to stitch. <laughs> what do you think, Wayne? Uh, yeah. That's what I figured he did. Everybody remember, this one's on Wednesday night, and as you're watching it on Wednesday night, tomorrow night, Thursday night, Supper Club. 6.30 at Matucci's. Everybody's invited. We have to build the fund up again because uh, it was uh, sort of used up for the Absolutely. state championship. Absolutely. Now we had a nice opening week crowd, and we, we could use some more people. Uh, great time, great kids. Uh, we got the, the guys down there on the, and, and on the home games, the cheerleaders coming to visit us. So it's, it's really a great time. 6.30 every Thursday night at Matucci's in the back room there. Great food. And for 6 bucks for the food, 5 bucks for the club, you can't go wrong. It's a great night out. And everybody's welcome. Everybody. And you don't have to join. You can come one night and, and, pay, yes. your, and pay for that one night, and that's it. Oh. <laughs> right, just plus, you can the camera. Come, that? plus you can come every night and yeah. pay more. Yeah, it's not like a dues thing. I mean, <laughs> if you if you you can't make it some night, that's fine, no problem. You come the next night, it's still gonna cost you six bucks, five bucks for the for the dues. You don't we don't like keep racking dues up on you. So you, if you wanna have a good time, you gotta show up there. Sixty one Zach Vallier heard on that play and he is one of their main linemen. He's a, he's their linebacker, 5'11", 218 pounds, but on offense, he's one of their main guards, too. So, so that's Ballier, a big Ballier, loss for them. Ballier's the name you hear from, from Tamaka for Ballier. years and years, right. too. That's yeah. a popular name up there in, in sports. You can tell we're getting old. We start to remember the names over the past <laughs> 15, 20 years. <laughs> Two minutes left in the first half. Yeah, I think I hate when he can talk to us like this. <laughs> Whitovich. Pitches. Back to Sinkovich. Gains five yards, but it just took yes. a while to develop. That's but, right. but it did gain five yards. Good play. So that was Steve Sinkovich getting that one. 135 left on the clock. That was almost like the delayed option. <laughs> it, took, it took forever to get rolling over there. Second down and four, 123 left on the clock. Wojtovich hands it up the middle to Lashinsky. Gain of about five yards, close to close. a first down. John Els right out in front of him too. I'll tell you what, uh, <laughs> when Rusty was playing back, uh, I guess it was the middle of his sophomore year in JVs, he had shown some some outstanding speed coming out of that that halfback position there, mm -hmm. uh, some good cuts and everything else. Uh, it's going to take him, I would assume, you know, a few games to get under his belt to get back into the groove of everything. But I'm sure, you know, by the by the third game, you're going to see First some down. very good running from Rusty from this from this backfield. Well, I mean, I, I can't stress enough. Like, there's a kid that had as bad a knee injury as there is. Right. You know, You're... just coming back and playing is enough. But to come back, become a captain in your senior year in the backfield, and, and you know that no matter what he says to you, in the back of his mind, there had to be that little nagging doubt that, you know, will I hold up? Will it be okay? So, I mean, every time he's on the field is a, is a miracle. One minute left on the clock. Whitovich pitches back to Lashinsky down to about the 10-yard line. Timeout called by the Red Tornadoes. I want to take a moment in this timeout, uh, and we talked a little bit about Supper Club last night. And for those of you who knew these two gentlemen, I mean, instantly you'll understand what we say. In the past year, of course, Steve Komasek, who was Coach Williams' father-in-law and, and one of the all-time Mount Carmel area supporters, I mean, Supper Club, and, and, of course, in the past week, Joe Kovac. I mean, Joe Kovac was Mount Carmel football. I mean, I don't think there was a game missed. I don't think he, there was a kid that he didn't know, a name he couldn't remember from the in the 50s and the 60s. I mean, he lived and, and breathed Mount Carmel football, and uh, he died after, after a bout with cancer just the other day. And, and we want to say how much we missed the two of those gentlemen and that our, our sincerest and, and deepest sympathy is with their families and we know that they're upstairs right now rooting for Mount Carmel area and it's those kind of guys that make what Mount Carmel area will always be. I just want to say they're going to be missed. Second down for the Red Tornadoes. They have one timeout left. What do you think? A pass? 
Well, make a call. Let's go on the on the yeah, early, early this season. In motion goes Veach, bringing it to the left side. Good oh, blocking. One. Touchdown, Red Tornadoes. Great Beautiful. block, uh, but a hold by the Red Tornadoes. There were some good blocks, but there was a, a big holding call there against the Red Tornadoes. How about that pass call? Right on target. Again, right. Huh? Good pitch. Well, the Jets going to have to wait a little while for that initial touchdown of his career, folks. <laughs> oh, well. 44 seconds left. Second down and a goal to go, goal to go from the 24-yard line. Wojtovich back to pass, and he's run down at about the 46-yard line. No, 36-yard line. Clock continues to run, 30 seconds, timeout. Last timeout by Mount Carmel area. This one's got to be a heave here, guys. <laughs> Third and 24. <laughs> Unfortunately, you know, it's taken us back, uh, you know, outside of field goal range here. A pretty good first half so far for Big Red. I, I you know, I mean, I, I know that the coach is going to talk about the, the miscues, the mental mistakes with the penalties and stuff like that. But again, you know, we have to keep telling you this: this is a new team, a young team. They're they're coming together, so you're going to have this. And they're still up 19-0. They've completely throttled uh, Tomoka. They have not. Tomoka has not threatened to do anything so far in this game. In fact, I don't believe Tomoka has crossed the midfield stripe. They, they have not been in Mount Carmel area territory so far in the game. Uh, so. I mean, they've got to be pleased defensively so far the way the game's been playing out. Offensively, yeah, they've had some mistakes that were costly at times, but, you know, that's that's going to happen until you learn. Whitevich, big rush this time. Tried to get the ball off to Sinkovich and goes out of bounds. That time, that was a blitz. Yeah, it was a blitz, yeah, was a blitz from the linebacker, number 60, untouched Tom Rogers. Fourth down, and the Red Tornadoes will go for it with 24 seconds left on the clock. Of course, a blitz is the hardest thing to learn, the hardest thing to pick up when you got new linemen. They all have to know what they're doing and who's coming. And he came so quickly that time, no one touched him. He came, he stepped right between the line. Coach Fourth Connelly, down play. Coach Connolly's rubbing his head. He's going to be losing some more hair at the rate <laughs> this is going. <laughs> Vitovich, quick pass. He's going to just throw it to the corner. Has Josh it. under it. All right, Josh. Hey, oh, no. no. He was in bounds at the four-yard line, and they call him out of bounds. But a great catch, and that's what we talked about, Paracella. Yeah. These are little things we're going to see that Paracella has the hands, and what a great catch by Josh. Uh, Paracella's really shown something so far this evening. He really has. I'll tell you what, if he was out of bounds, it, that was close. You you can't uh, get he, much closer than that one. I think he had one foot on the line probably he, is yep. what they called. And he was right there. Well, Tamak will have time here to Did the sun just on load on one. What happened in here? Oh, geez. <laughs> I can get a tan with these have your spotlights on. Timeout called by the Blue Raiders. This is a long half. It's really dragging, and there's have been a, there's been a lot of throwing in the play, in the first half. We'll see if we can pick Jose up here and pick up some stats. You'll go down at halftime and I'll, get most I'll of them. I'll do but... my best. I certainly will. I... <laughs> you know what he's like when he doesn't want to do something, but <laughs> I will give him my best pitch to tell us what's going on here in the first half stat-wise. Coach Babinski looks like he's about as red as Coach Conley. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I'm looking around here, guys. Fantastic opening night crowd. Yeah, it is. Great crowd. And again, as I said in the beginning, you couldn't ask for, for better football weather than tonight. I mean, usually these first two games are sweltering. You know, the humidity's high. Tonight, it's a nice, cool breeze. People are actually walking around with coats and sweatshirts on here in the last Friday in August. So, Yeah, it is. It's a, and, and a good night. Usually, we're here in shorts. It's hot in the press box. It's just a nice football night. Coach Connolly's down on the sidelines discussing excerpts from the Bible, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> it's going to be a rough, yeah. rough halftime with him, I think, on oh. this one. <laughs> Fayash. Oh, big rush by Malakoski and goes nowhere. Sinkovic in on the tackle. Also, two Sinkovic is in on the tackle along with Chris Cuff. You know what's great there? <clears throat> that Jason had taken the center back in. That was a quarterback sneak. And Jason took the quarterback or took the center back into the quarterback. He couldn't even run through the line. That's the end of the first half. The score, the Red Tornadoes 19, the Blue Raiders nothing. We'll be back with some halftime stats in one second. Okay, for Mount Carmel in the first half, it was a, the expected defensive effort that we did expect. For Tamaqua, they ran 14 times for minus 26 yards in the first half. They were two of eight for 17 yards in the air for a total of minus nine yards total offense in the first half and one first down. Mount Carmel, on the other hand, ran the ball 30 times for a net of 110 yards. They were two or four in passing for 40 yards total. For Mount Carmel, the leading rusher, Nick Sebus off the bench at quarterback in the second quarter, ran seven times for 61 yards. Stevie Sinkovich had 10 carries for 50 yards. Al Bailey, five for 20. Rusty Lashinsky, three for four. Uh, Mike Wojtovich got sacked a few times, so it was three for minus 29. And Mike Sinkovich was two for four. And the receiving department, young Johnny Veach in his freshman debut with two catches for 40 yards, total of 10 first downs, total of 150 yards, total offense. Robert, not a bad not a bad effort for the first night. No, we talked a little bit about it up here. Defensively, we knew how strong we were going to be, Jose, and we were. Yeah, we were. Defensive front is awful tough, and they're having a whole lot of trouble doing anything. Offensively, I think we got in gear a little bit in the second quarter, and I, I think it's going to come around. Our one concern was the young line, not knowing what they were doing, and uh, and they're they're getting it. They're picking it up, and we'll we'll see as the as the season progresses. These young guys will get started. Yeah, they will. Have a good second half. Okay. We want to see you in between quarters, so we'll have Jose in between <laughs> the third and fourth quarter. We'll, we'll give it a shot. We'll be back in one moment. All right. We're back here to start the second half. Tamaqua will kick off. The Red Tornadoes in deep receiving formation. Number five, Nick Sebus. 28, Bailey, and 25, John Veach. This one's going to 28. Al Bailey takes it on about the 14-yard line. Brings it up to the 15, to the 25, to the 30. Tackled at the 29-yard line. First down and 10, Red Tornadoes. I imagine there were some interesting conversations happened in the locker room, Warren. But none, none that can repeat it on air right now, I'm sure. No, I, actually, I shouldn't say that. That's right. It I wasn't mean, that bad. Yeah, I, I think they had a pretty good first half. Obviously, they had some mental errors. Obviously, those penalties that, that turn back scoring opportunities are, are things you want to talk about. But you can't do a whole lot about them. They're done. You start the second half now. And it'll be interesting to see what Big Red does, what kind of intensity they have. Whitevich in at quarterback. Hands the ball off to Steve Zinkovich. Carries the ball to the 32-yard line. Second down and about eight yards to go. You know, but I think the, the, the whole point in that halftime talk isn't going to be the type of talk that we've, we've sort of been used to over the last few years. Oh, no. You no. know, uh, I think it's a, it's a type of edu educational talk because everybody does realize the type of offensive line that, that needs to be gelled together. Yeah. I mean, again, you know, and Coach Williams made a point in Supper Club that he had done more coaching probably this year than he has since he's been here because there's so many different players at different positions. Fumble on the on Fumble the on the play. It looks like it's recovered by Steve Sinkovich, recovered his own fumble. You know, and, and I think one of the things that, that you always have to caution yourself about, and, and everybody does it, is you get you get into this rut where you see a 15-game win streak, you see a, a fabulous right. football team win a state championship, you had it happen two years before that, and your expectations are pretty high. And I'll tell you, it's a little unfair to do that with, mm -hmm. with a new group of guys, but I know they don't care. I mean, they want you to expect that, but you got to always temper yourself a little bit. Whitevich, back to pass, looks over at Montgomery, gets him nice. at about the 30, not at about the 42-yard line. Line. First down, Red Tornadoes from the 42-yard line. A beautiful reception by Montgomery. You could see him watching the ball right into his hands, and that's what you want to do. You want to take the, the defensive mi man right out of your mind. you got to block him out, and you have to watch the ball, and that's exactly what Montgomery did. First down and 10, Red Tornadoes to start the third quarter. Well, looked like Tamaqua jumped offside. 
It's going to go against us, though. Somebody twitched again. Yep. And again, the mistakes. Even when they jump offside, they can get back. The mistakes are, are piling up a little bit offensively for us. This has not been a sharp offensive game by a long shot. But again, we're, we lead 19-0. It's the first game of the season. So you can't complain too much. And, and it's, it, I just I just enjoy watching. I mean, you're learning some new numbers now, watching some new kids make their mark, beginning to, to, to show you what they're going to be doing for the next 10 or hopefully 15 games. First down, 15 yards to go. Whitovich hands off to Steve Sinkovich. Nice tackle made again by number 88, Dave Fegley. And the defensive end is doing a heck of a job right there. Right now, 88 is Tamaqua. I mean, he's on every yep. play. He's uh, special teams, the same thing with him. He's, he's really one heck of a football player. He, uh, he has nothing to be ashamed about right now uh, on defense. Second down, 12 yards to go. Montgomery split far left. Whitovich puts Stevenson Kovich in motion to the left side. Tries a quick pass to Veach, cuts it back up the middle, and that one only goes for about a one yard gain. Actually, on that one, the linebackers were just up too close. That's, a, that's an odd play because you got everybody moving the opposite direction of the way mm -hmm. he, he went. He went back into the pile. I, I, I'm assuming he was designed to do that, but you, you were losing they the two They had a linebacker blockers, coming yeah. right at him, right? You're losing the two blockers. Uh, Sinkovich could not have made a play because he was in motion that way. He could not have gotten into the play fast enough. I mean, maybe that maybe that's just a timing thing where they need to get that sharper to see how it works. But it, it seemed like an odd way to do things. He ran right into the into the the wash that was coming towards them. Third down and ten for the Red Tornadoes. 8:51 left in the third quarter. Whitovich tries to roll to his right. Gets it away, and a nice catch made by 21, Matt Montgomery. Big hit by number 88, Dave Fagley, but a good job by Whoopi to get that one off. Nice play that time. Quarterback made a nice play. Whitovich stayed with it. He was under heavy pressure coming from the side. He saw it coming. He stayed there and, and fired a shot to Montgomery. I'll tell you what, what, I, what you did notice on that play is that our, our linemen are starting to pick up the blocks that they are supposed to be picking up on the rollout. The rollout blocking is not the easiest thing to do in the world, but in that play they did very very good job. Inside handoff to Veach. Good run to about the 24-yard line. Well, that was a nice, you know, that's a run that'll be ordinary when you look at it on a film, but I'll tell you what, a lot of wash going, a lot of people moving around. He did a lot of sidestepping. Uh, to make a nice play that he gained four yards. 29, Josh Paracella into the game for Montgomery. A lot of personnel coming in and out, Wayne. Oh, you need to. You know, the first game of the season, you know, what's your endurance like at this point, uh, you know, three, four, five weeks down the road, uh, you know, from opening day, and you, you need some fresh legs in there. Steve Sinkovich cuts it back to the middle and gets down to about the 29-yard line. This is a nice sustained drive now from Mount Carmel area. They've, they've put, put together a nice drive here. They're deep in the, into uh, Tamaqua territory. The ball's about the 30-yard line. Uh, so many people coming in and out. We, we can't keep announcing yeah. their numbers. I mean, you're watching. Well, Matt O'Brien just came in and also Jeff Homiak. So You'll learn their numbers, but I mean, we can't keep track of it. No, everybody. Dan Daukas came in at right guard right now. This is the first time we've seen Daukas at guard. We saw him a little bit in the scrimmages, but he comes in at the right guard position. Going to try it off the left side. First down, Red Tornadoes at about the 24-yard line. Cinco goes over the left side. That time you saw Sinkovich go down, but right in front of him, and here's a good sign for a young team, is Avellino. He's making the block on the last guy. Had Sinkovich broke free and was running upright, he would have made the block and sprung him. And that's from what you tight like end. To see. Yep. That's what you like to see people from the, from the opposite end of the play down in front of you. Ball's on the 25-yard line, 6.53 left in the third quarter. A full house backfield going here now. This one's going to Bailey. Off the right side. Good blocks that time, and he gets about five or six yards, but that's exactly what they were looking for on that play. Well, I'll tell you why. You take a look, uh, you have a guard in there, number 74, Matt O'Brien. He's only a sophomore, six foot, 195 pounds, getting some experience in the second half of the first game. Made a good block alongside yes, of Vogler did. right there. Second down, five yards to go. Now they're going to go left side with Steve Sinkovich. Get some running room. He's going into the end zone. Touchdown, Red Tornadoes. Good block by the left side of the Red Tornado offensive line that time. 
25-0 Red Tornadoes. Now that was vintage Sinkovich there. Yeah. I mean, took a couple of good solid hits when he broke through the line, bounced off everybody, and then just took off. Montgomery the holder, Jonathan Elst will do the long snap, and to kick the extra point, 42, Mike Sinkovich. Snaps back, it's down, the kick's up, and it's there good. He's, he's cooking, he's, With he's kicking he's so well. six minutes left in the third quarter, the score, the Red Tornadoes, 26. Tamaqua Blue Raiders, nothing. Yeah, I'll was... tell you what, Warren, that's, that is a, a great sign first uh, First game, you're looking at you know some good snaps coming back from the center. You got a good hold, and and you got Sinkovich now with some authority kicking the ball through the uprights on the extra points. And what's great about it, you get into a situation where you're back on the 15-yard line. You want to kick a 22-yard field goal. You know, Mike can do it. Yeah, you have that confidence level yes. that that uh, your offense begins even there. Yeah, I mean, he, he's, he's really clicking, and you know, it's it's such a shame for him. He went in the last year, those of you remember that championship game out in Altoona, he needed to kick <laughs> one extra point. Yeah. I guess, the tie, was it the tie you tie. broke? And then one tie. to break one the all-time record, and, and he just could not buy an extra point kick. Brokey should have given him, that should have been a gimme. Yeah. Brokey should have called that a, a gimme, gimme, you know? Gimme, you got it. I never it. thought about that, like the Bud commercial, a gimme. <laughs> that commercial, That's yeah. good. I think of the whole championship game, that you was the only thing that. you felt you bad about, that was good. not getting that. Yeah, that's that's, that is true. Sinkovich will kick Mike Sinkovich. We have to start saying first names here with yeah, the twins. Yeah, with two of them like that, you need to. And with Steve Sinkovich ran the kickoff back, or the touchdown in, Mike Sinkovich will kick off. <laughs> oh, they're, oh. oh, they're bad. Powell's going to pick it up at about the nine-yard line. Josh Paracella uh -oh. all over him. Paracella makes the tackle at the nine-yard line. There's nothing worse. I'm telling you right now, there's nothing worse than a knuckleball kickoff coming down floating in the air. You don't know where that ball, you know, when it's turning over, end, end over end, you know when it hits the ground, at least it's gonna go in a straight line. But uh, when they come down like a knuckleball, they hit the ground and there they skid. Good job by Paracel. Oh, I'll tell you what, jo hey, Josh Paracel has the speed. Paracel has a heck of a football game yes, so far tonight, it really has. Yeah, he's the kind of guy that's not playing every play, but every time he's in the game, he's an impact. You know, he's, make, he's making a moment there for himself. First down, Tabakla from about the 11-yard line. Tries Boyer, big hit by Chris Cuff. That was probably the longest run from scrimmage. Uh, Tamakwa, as you heard Jose, if you were watching the halftime, that Tamakwa had a minus eight yards total offense in the first half of this football game, and they had a total of one first down. So that was kind of indicative of their offensive display. They have, they have not been able to get on track. They have not been able to do anything. And now the only guy that was showing some promise here is number 10 uh, for Tamaqua, and he's now sitting on the ground hurt. So it's it's not going well for Tamaqua right now. And we have direction. a player down right now. Well, Boyer's down, but we also have a player down. Looks like 35 Brian Detry down for the Red Tornadoes. And Tamaqua, the Tamaqua player is, is 10, which is Boyer. Not, Boyer. That's Boyer, right. He has a different number yeah. than he's supposed to. Their shirts didn't come in. They didn't get their new shirts in. Oh, so. okay. They're, I noticed there were different numbers throughout the game on these guys. They had all different uh, numbers in the program, was supposed to say. Paracel into the lineup for the Red Tornadoes to take the place of Detry. Is that Detry or Veach? Oh, that's... That's actually that's Veach. Veach yeah. Okay, that's the Jet. It was it was uh, Jonathan Veach was down. I thought it was 35. Jonathan wearing the trademark Veach high white socks that his that his brother wore so much in his career. I'll tell you what, a little difference in the number there from 22 to 25. But I'll tell you what, look at the walk on him and the way he carries himself. There's a lot of similarities in these two guys. Boyer still down on the field for the Blue Raiders. And again, everybody remember Thursday night supper club at Matucci's, 6.30. Warren will be there and talk to everybody, and also you get a chance to talk to some players and talk to the coaches. Yep, have a good time. You really do. You get to preview the upcoming game. We go over the past game, you know, talk about what we saw on the field with the coaching staff. Talk, we'll be talking about the Panther Valley next week. Of course, we travel up to land. That's right. <laughs> it's the one chance you get to be with us. Second down, five yards to go, four yards to go for the Blue Raiders. And movement in the Blue Raider line, the left tackle lifted up. So this will be a five-yard penalty against the Blue Raiders, a dead ball foul, illegal procedure. Right now, if you're, if you're the Blue Raiders, you, you don't even want to bring the film in for offense. I mean, this is the kind of thing you just leave go. They, they just had, they had a lot of breakdowns. 
they had a lot of miscues. They were not in the right spots where they were supposed to be, that kind of stuff. Plus, they, they came up against a, a pretty hardened defense for a first game. You know, and, and they got nothing. They, there was no cracks. There was no nothing. They just took a good wearing from everybody. So you're five minutes and 13, 12 seconds left in the third quarter. They still have only one first down in the whole football game. And if they're out of minus yardage, it's by one or two. That's all they got in total yardage right now. <laughs> Going to try it up the middle. Malakoski on the tackle. 42. 42, Mike. Sinkovich and 32, Rusty Lashinsky. This will be a third down and eight yards to go for the Blue Raiders. 436 left in the third quarter. Wins right for the Blue Raiders. Oh, a big rush that time by the Red Tornadoes. Fayash gets around, but Lashinsky brings him down after about a one-yard gain. Good play by Lashinsky. He got the defensive end coming in on the on the uh, quarterback, and and uh, Rusty made a, an excellent play there, keeping him from going around the corner. Four da fourth down and five yards to go. Sebus and Montgomery are deep for the Red Tornadoes. Fayash will punt. Boyer was the punter, but timeout. And Tamako are having some rough times with their helmets, yeah, aren't they? They're having a heck of a time with the, with the front of their helmets here. He had done something with his chin strap. <laughs> I think he had either tangled in his face mask or something. Snaps back. Fayash has it. Kicks away, it's a short one, and he's calling everybody off at about the 39-yard line. Bounces back and is going to be downed at about the 44-yard line. First down, red tornadoes from the 44-yard line. Nice nice bounce on that kick, because he didn't right. kick it for no, distance. He, that he got was, it way got up in the air. got a 20-yard bounce. Way up in the air, but it hit the ground spinning, and it started bouncing his way. And when it's that short, there's no way to even come under and fair catch it. No. no. At 319 left in the third, we see Sebus come back in at quarterback now for the Red Tornadoes. Unfortunately for, for, for the Blue Raiders, whatever has happened to uh, Boyer, number 10, he's, he's out. He's still on the sideline. Right. They're still working on him. So it's doubtful whether he's going to re-enter the game. And he was the one shining offensive spot they had right now going for them. Fakes the handoff. Brings it around the end. Now he's going to cut back in and tackled at the 38-yard line. Nice tackle made that time by number 60, Tom Rogers. I don't know if that was that a design play, you think, or, or was that a broken play? I'm not sure. I'm not sure what we were doing on that one. Loss of about 10 yards, second down and 20. Now, that play didn't look, I don't know. I mean, maybe it was designed that way, but it, it didn't look good. It was to the short side of the field. Yeah. Shellhammer split far left for the Red Tornadoes. Gives it up the middle. Big tackle made in there by the linebackers. 60 in on the tackle again, Rogers. First, as you look around the stadium, of course, the first full season with the new school, new scoreboard. First time we've opened the season with a brand new scoreboard with the, the sign on the top and everything, the, the scrolling letters. And in front of you, you'll see a, there's a brand new track laid down, the rubberized track. It's about to be painted, I understand, in the next two weeks. It should have been painted this week except for rain. And you'll see that surrounding the track. So this facility all painted red now, <laughs> red and white all everywhere. Tried the nice. inside handoff, and it, it was a good gainer of about 11 yards, but still gets it only to the 49-yard line. So a fourth down situation for the Red Tornadoes. Let's see who goes in the Jake Shellhammer in punt formation again for the Red Tornadoes. We're counting everybody, and we're short. I think that's what we're trying to decide. Six, seven, eight, nine. 
Snaps it back, little low, goes through Shellhammer's legs. He picks it up at about the 29-yard line. Good Still kick. gets the kick away. Good job. Bounces on about the 31-yard uh, line, and that's a good, yes. good kick. Yeah. Nice heads-up play by Shellhammer. Absolutely. That, there's a busted play, gets through his legs. You think it's a disaster. He turns around, gets some room, and gets a nice kick out, a nice kick. That's heads up, poised football that time by Jake. And there, Shell Emmer is a, a six foot, 155 pound junior. Handling some of the punting chores for Big Red tonight. 108 left on the clock in the third quarter. First down and 10, Tamakwa from the 30-yard line. Fayash tries to the Ooh. tailback, going nowhere. Ooh. Jeff Evans under the pile, Malakoski there. Also 42, Mike Sinkovich. Tamakwa looks like a Chinese fire drill. Now they got two players on the ground now again. Neither one of them's, get, their one's gonna get up, but he's, gonna, he's in trouble. Yeah, their offensive line right now is getting beat up pretty good. Left on the ground is number 70, 74, Jamie Turner. 64, he, he went back into the huddle, but I don't know, he's not, he is he's, not doing well out there. Yeah, you're right, Bob, this, I think that's what it is. They're taking a pretty good hammering. Mount Carmel area is extremely physical on defense. I mean, extremely physical. They're big, they're tough, they're fast. And Tamak was uh, starting to break down a little bit, I think, uh, injury-wise. And I believe they're starting to tire a little bit from the, from the looks of them. They're yep. starting to get a little bit tired just by the way they're standing in their huddle. Number so 64 uh, is still over there, you know, while yeah, I, I don't he know can't get his bounce. Yeah, they're, they're, they're talking to him, and he's going to apparently stay in, the, stay in the game here. But He seems wobbly, him, doesn't he? Yeah. I don't, I don't think he should be there. <laughs> look at him. Well, you know, you're talking about in that last play, Cuffey, he blitzed from his left side, and there was Jeff Evans pinching in from his nose guard position coming to the left. And they're I gonna, think that kid took the brunt of everything. They're gonna, they're gonna yeah. take, yeah, here they, they, that's the smartest thing a referee could do. That kid is truly knocked senseless right now. He, he's having trouble focusing. The one player was holding him up, and he was gonna actually return to the line for the next offensive series. The referee peeked in the huddle, looked straight at him, raised his hand, called a, 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 an official timeout, and told him to get sure. off the field, and they, they're helping him off. I don't think anybody came in for him. Yeah, okay, no. here, here we go. <laughs> they're, they are All having. All righty, <laughs> with 20 <laughs> seconds left on the clock. They are having in their In the third quarter, 26 to nothing, Red Tornadoes. Tamako just trying to get a playoff here at second and nine. I believe they're gonna let it run the way they're going here. No block in now at quarterback. He's gonna throw one downfield. Got the big tight end. Good play by Montgomery and Veach. That's, is that no? Nope. No, it's 29. Uh, Josh Paracella. Paracella was right he on. He was him. right with him all the way. Good job uh, by Paracella. Montgomery played that great. That's exactly what the, what a free safety yep. should be doing. He sees where the ball's being thrown. He rushes over and, and helps out. But Paracella didn't need help. He was all over Big 88 that time. Paracella truly, truly is a bright star here right now, coming on to the field. I said every time he's come on, he's, he's, he's had some kind of impact on the play, and that's what you like to see. And I'll tell you what, he was giving up. Paracella is five foot six, 135 pounds, and he was covering Fagley, who's six foot two, 175 pounds. He was giving up a little bit of height on that he one. Was, a lot, but he, a lot played, of he was there. playing like he was he six was, two, wasn't he? He's he, huh? playing big on that one. <laughs> But of course, at his size, he's going to be giving up a lot of size a lot of times, so he's <laughs> going to have to play big. I hope, I mean, Ernie couldn't give him any size, but I hope the heck he gave him that quickness. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to once in a while have to dodge a bullet out there <laughs> when you're that big. You know what, though? If you know Josh, like, you know, I know Josh, I've known him for, for many, many years. He doesn't dodge any bullets. No, nope. he comes he right likes at them. <laughs> He likes to take a hit. Huh? Oh yes, he does. Oh yeah, you like that in a guy, but at 135 pounds, right? you gotta pick him. You know what? <laughs> it, it, he doesn't care. The secret about Josh is he knows where to hit the big guys. That's yeah, what's that's... scary. <laughs> <laughs> and he's he's a fun player to watch. He really is. Start of the fourth quarter, Paracel is still in there at cornerback along with Kalinowski, Montgomery, and Pete Avellino in the defensive backfield.
No block, gonna throw. Looked over the middle, broken up by 47, Steve Sinkovic. Yeah, number, number three for Tamaqua is a new guy, Essington, is in the game, wide receiver. Uh, he's a big one, six foot two, but, but thin, 164 pounds. Uh, the new quarterback, I, I, I say, now Fayash, and I believe Fayash took a pretty good beating. Right. But the new guy in here is, what's his? No block. Kanablock. 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 He seems like a sharper passer. He's a little taller, and he seems to yeah. have a, a little bit more uh, touch with the ball than, than the Fayash oh, did. No, no. Timeout called by the Blue Raiders. They were short a couple players. Well, what happened with so many linemen getting hurt, Wayne, they're just having trouble, you know, having enough people out there right now. Well, they only had nine on the field. Right, That's so they close. were missing it's the two. Tough. 64 and 74. <laughs> yeah, Coach, Coach Jack, Jack Young's not, not going to be too happy about tonight, I'm sure. Uh, they... They came up against a good defense, yes, but they looked they looked poor on offense. They were not they looked like they weren't really ready with a lot of things to come to the game with. And on top of that, they had trouble remembering to be in the game or not to be in the game. They've got some injuries. They look like they're winded. They really do. They they, they look like they're a, a tired ball club right now. And that's not a good sign either. I mean, <laughs> you're you're losing 26 nothing and you haven't done anything. I mean, there's you've done absolutely zero offensively. But you don't want to look tired. I mean, you should be plugging that's away right. here. And I know that's that's probably going to be his real concern. Now they're look they're still looking at Boyer on and off over there, and, and that would be a crushing right. blow should they for the rest of its season, yeah, I mean, right? You, you, you truly hope that doesn't happen to them. That most of the kids they've lost so far tonight go back into the game. Fayash punting. Ball bounces, taken by Sebus on the 41-yard line, cuts it outside and tackled at the 44. Good play by the sophomore to take that ball, though, and, and not leave it bounce back any farther. Yeah. Little Waleska, Chad Waleska got him there. He's, you want to talk about being a small guy. He's five foot seven, 139 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's going to pick and choose his hits, too. <laughs> Whitevich back in a quarterback for the Red Tornadoes. Lashinsky in at fullback and Steve Sinkovic at tailback. Pitch back to Sinkovic. Tries it around the outside. Good tackle made by 74, which is Jamie Turner. Second down, 10 yards to go for the Big Red. I think, one of the, I think one of the big differences when you, when you talk about the Tamaqua team being a little bit tired is, and they're all going to going to sense this throughout the season is nobody can can substitute like we can. You know, we're sending in so many different players all the time. No wonder we look so fresh. Whitovich lets one fly, incomplete at about the 29-yard line. It's heading for Montgomery on that one. Looks like Matt's got a cramp. That's the tough part about playing in, in the first and second game. That's where you're going to see them yep. all the time. When it's hot and your fluids are out. And he's down. I don't know if anyone's seen him yet. Yeah, the ref did. Uh, there's Jeff. <laughs> Jeff was walking around. They were yelling at him. And he was trying to see where they were pointing. Montgomery's so far away from the play. He's a good 40 yards away from the huddle right now. 10.54 left in the ball game. 26 to nothing the score. The Red Tornadoes in the lead. Now as we, as we, we move through the fourth quarter, I mean, it's fairly obvious that Tamaqua is not going to mount a comeback here. Uh, you'll see a lot of, uh, as, as Whitey's way, you'll see a lot of more kids play, get some more playing time in. We look down the, the, the season a little bit, if we, if we dare to. We, we see Panther Valley looming on the horizon next week. A Panther Valley team that, again, still in disarray over, over new coaching staffs right. again. And really another program struggling to find itself when it had such, such great promise there in, in, in the late 80s and early 90s. Whitovich, draw play to Sinkovich. Good tackle made by uh, the initial hit, 60, 63 maybe, Matt Hill. He just held his ground right there from the right side of the defensive line. It didn't move anywhere and made the tackle. But you look down at Panther Valley, and then, of course, you're, you're going to bounce into the, Southern here. The, the much Southern. awaited meeting, the first ever football meeting between Mount Carmel area and Southern at Mount Carmel area. 
the Tigers, the Tigers have played here in a playoff game against uh, Columbia, I believe it was, a couple years back. Shellhammer punt formation. Gets the kick away. A nice high end over end. Powell almost fumbled it, but <laughs> look who's on top of him. Yep. 26 that time, Ronnie Lentini. And he, he's had himself a good game, Yep, too. he's been down there every time. But you look at that schedule, you see Southern Nana line, of course, coming here for the first time. Smoking area. The next game. You know, the following game. Then Nana you're Coke. The, Nana Coke, we played Nana Coke up there. And, and for the final time, we'll only play them in a two-game series. We understand Nana Coke will leave the schedule then. And, of course, then you bounce into the North Schuylkills and the Marions. North Schuylkill uh, right after. So we have, yeah, you're right. Marion here at home. Right. North Schuylkill will be away down at the, at the pit in, in uh, Fountain Springs down there. I say, don't say that derogatorily, but they play very well in that pit of theirs down there. So it's it's going to be an exciting year coming up. Pitch back to Boyer. He's Ooh. back in there. Big hit by 60, Jason Malakoski. Oh, I bet she wishes he didn't come in. Now, Fayesh and Boyer, and Boyer just <laughs> stuck his hands and said, guys, who's supposed to do this? I mean, number 60 is with me in the ball as it's being handed off here. The ball's on the 22-yard line, second down and about 18 yards to go. 9.40 left in the ball game. Jose, I want you to guys know that at halftime, Jose took to the camera like a fish to water, too. Did we ever see if he came between the third and fourth quarter? Did you look to see if he was there? No. Okay. Boy, he could have been there, and you could be in big trouble right now. Well, I guess he'll have to get over it now, won't he? That's going to be a legal procedure called against the Blue Raiders. He won't do that unless I'm down there prodding him. He'll never do it on his own. No, you're right. No, he's all, he'll tell me he's too busy all the time. Well, he actually, it's funny. He has another job tonight. He's got to pay attention. We apparently have new ball boys also, the guys who get the balls into the game. And so he's got to pay attention to them, too, and make sure that they're getting everything where, where it needs to be. So he said he has his hands full so far in the opening game with all his extra duties. I told him there would be something extra in his paycheck. You know, it's the least we could do. Fayash fumbles. And we're looking at who's on the ball right now. Ball recovered by the Red Tornadoes. Looks like 54, Jeff Evans. Once again, Evans, is uh, he's having one of those games that where it's a quiet one, you know, but he's causing every type of havoc known to man in the center of the line. He always does. 8.32 left. You know, I, I, we're talking about number 64, you know, how... how woozy he was and everything and I believe that they're about to yeah, put, put him, him on, on a stretcher, stretcher yep. and take him out by ambulance and we certainly wish the best to, to whoever that is going on. I believe it is going to be number 64. Sebas in at quarterback. They're showing the blitz. They hand it off up the middle to 47 which is Steve Sinkovich. 88 was on the initial hit from his defensive end position but Steve gets about four yards. Fakely's quick coming across from that defensive end position. He, he's had a whale of a football game. He's the only guy that can go into the films and, and be happy and know he's not going to, you know, you know, get a, a tearing up because he's played a good game. He really has. Number 64 for Tomahawk area is Ray Woodring. He's a guard that I believe they're going to, yes, it is him. He is the one they're going to put on a stretcher. This one's going to Mike Sinkovich behind a big line of the Red Tornadoes. And, and he was Ooh. so close to a touchdown I thought he was to going about in. the one-yard line. I, I didn't think that kid was going to get him down, but he had him spun. He had him going the opposite way. That was the only way he was going to stop him. He's talking about a freight train coming down the tracks. Ooh. He had the whole pile moving with him. Good surge that time by the Red Tornado line. Absolutely. I said already in the second half here, you can see that they're starting to gel together a little bit. They're starting to pick up their assignment blocking on the blitz and on the passing. Sebas hands off to Steve Sinkovich. Touchdown through a big hole. Good job by the right side of the Red Tornado line that time. Steve made that look harder than it really was. 
<laughs> he really didn't have to do a whole lot on that one. He had a big hole to move through. 42, Mike Sinkovich will change his shoe. 32 to nothing, Red Tornadoes in the lead. John Ellis with the long snap. Matt Montgomery, 21, will be the holder, and Mike Sinkovich to kick the extra point. Snaps back, it's down, the kick's up. And it's good. With 6.41 left in the ball game, the score, the Red Tornadoes, 33, the Blue Raiders, nothing. Mike is saying, why couldn't I do this one more time last year? <laughs> <laughs> what happened to my foot last year? <laughs> But he's certainly back in true form this year. I Not mean, he this is year. kicking with authority this You're year. You're right. They're the kind of kicks when you see a guy kicking like that, you, you know you don't want to block it because you know it's going to hurt like heck if you get in front of that baby. I think got about six, six minutes, 41 seconds left for DeMarco to do something here to take back home with him because so far it's going right. to be a long ride. So I think right now you're seeing some changes being made in the Big Red right now. They're, they're lining up a whole new, looks like a whole new defense and probably a new offense. Well, it can't be a whole new one because there weren't anybody, I don't think anybody didn't, didn't play, play so right? <laughs> can't be that new. Well, let's just say that some of the big guys up front are coming I mean, There out. aren't any clean uniforms floating on that sideline right now. One thing about Whitey, everybody's mother has to watch when he's done with the game. <laughs> Mike Sinkovich with the kickoff, bounces by Powell again. He's going to pick it up on the nine-yard line, and all you see is red shirts. And a nice tackle made by 29, Josh Paracella. And you're also going to have a, a clipping penalty on Tamaqua. Huh? <laughs> on top of everything else, they're going to be called for clipping. Tell you what, they do a heck of a job at getting down on, on the kickoff coverage. Yeah, they do. Usually what happens here, the defense takes one play and then he starts pulling a couple people out. I, mean, I think somebody's shooting Paracel out of a cannon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's, that. you know, Josh plays everything with that intensity, Warren. You know, he's yeah. keyed up at all, the all times. He, he's... You know, he's looking for the throw. Timeout called by the Red Tornadoes, and here it comes right now where Coach Conley will take the defense out and bring another group in. Nice round of applause from the Mount Carmel area side as, as the entire team has just walked off and a new team is going in. Tamaqua area, on the other hand, they're sitting on their own five-yard line, about to take the ball over again with six minutes, 17 seconds remaining in the football game. If they're going to do something, this is going to have to be it pretty much. We hope you enjoyed Jose at halftime. We're going to try to make that a, a regular event for us if we can continue to do that, a weather permitting. Of course, if it's raining or something, we will not be able to put the electronics on the field. But we're also going to try uh, as, as we progress, and Jose needs to get a little bit into this. We need to, and it's not nothing wrong with him, but he has to get used to it is maybe at the end of a quarter have him run over and give us a quick spot or talk to us even occasionally during the game if there's a well, lull or something. Well, the boys are working on a wireless Yeah, we, so we had the wireless down there, but it was we couldn't right. function them all together. We need to find out how, we, how to w get them connected. KMC all up like crew's going to work on that. Yeah, I'll keep busy next week. Good stop made by 28 Al Bailey. That was Boyer still in there at the running back position. Ronnie Lentini now comes in. Well, I'll tell you what, if you're if you're Tamaqua and, I'm, and there's no one going to tell me that this is not happening, and it's not crossing their mind that they're about to launch into their fifth year of no points on the board, uh, probably a record. I don't know of another school that's done that. And they're, they're going to about to go five years without scoring a point against Mount Carmel area. That's got to be in the back of their mind, and I'm guessing they're going to play the starters to try to get some points on the board. Oh, going to try one up the middle, goes nowhere. Bailey in on the hit. It's not the way also, to 70, 52, Charlie Adams. Go ahead, Wayne. Matt O'Brien, 74. 74. Oh, 
The young tornado defense is taking over right where the older guys left off. And this is what you need. This is, I'll tell you what, since Whitey has taken over, uh, this is his trademark. You get into the fourth quarter and you start giving experience to the younger players. And, it, and as we have seen, it has paid off in the years. Third and eight for the Blue Raiders now. Going to try throwing a pass. Still running with the ball. Ooh, Big nice. hit by 41 in there for the Red Tornadoes, which is Mickey, Mickey Morose. Ooh, that was a nice hit. Nice there. hit. That stung, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that had a sting to it when he went in. That brings up a fourth down, and the Blue Raiders are going to punt from their own end zone again. And they've done enough of that so wow. far tonight. <laughs> the one thing they've learned is how to punt out of their own end zone so they can go the rest of the year and not have to practice that anymore. Number 12 in the punt for the Raiders, Chuck Fayash. They're now going to have to call timeout because, once again, they did not have enough people on the football field. And that, if, if there's a one glaring error they've got to address, is they, can, they, they have to figure out who the heck is supposed to be playing here. I, think, I don't think they've lined up the punt yet no. where they had enough people on the field to do it with. Now they ended up burning a timeout. Which See, that's, I'll is tell kind you of what. meaningless now, but even so, it, does, it must irritate you to do that all the time. That's, that, that's the difference between coaching staffs. If you watch Coach Edwards down on our sideline down here, yeah. he has his hand up when it's third down, looking for everybody that's going in on the punt team, on any special league team, he has them all lined up and ready to go. And he talks to everybody about it. Yes, he does. Yeah. And, I, and I'll tell you what, it's those little details that keep you, keep you winning state championships. And that you can tell that Tomalka, that's an area they need to address because they were not ready to do that. They were consistently short people all the time. And we send back a, a new crew, 27 and 29 now, uh, Van Doren. And, of course, Paracella back for the kick return. It should be interesting. This should be interesting. Especially if this guy can get the punt off. <laughs> yeah, well, he's got he's, he's to get it in the air first. I'll give you that. Snaps back. Looks like he might this time. It's bouncing end over end in the direction of Paracella. Actually, they both thought they were going to get it. It's going to be downed on the 39-yard line. Oh, no harm And a, again, a, a bad call or a call back behind the line on the Red Tornadoes. What is that going to be? That's a 15-yard personal touch. foul. Yeah, personal oh. foul. Well, I'm sure that'll be discussed heavily in, in the film session. <laughs> Just a hit that didn't matter. Uh, new offense coming in here for the Red Tornadoes right now. Get to work on this one, pal. You, you got to work these. Got James Zublik in there. Number 10, Mike Powell. 68, Matt Lepotsky. 74, of course. O'Brien's back in. He's played He's a lot tonight. There. We're, look at number 10, guys. Powell. Yep. He's listed. He's listed in the program as a fullback. I want to see <laughs> if he lines up. He's five foot three, 135 pounds. Number eight, Mike, Mike Smith. Mike Smith's in there. Right, we're gonna go in and talk about this in a minute. That's, uh, is that Coach? Yeah, Coach Edwards. 64, Sean Thomas. Ronnie Lentini, 26. Oh, Mike's coming out. Pal, Powell's the kind of guy, you know, you see him in college a lot. Those short uh, fullbacks, oh, God, then they get you right around knee level all the time when they're coming through the line. <laughs> you get to hate them all the time. You can't tackle them. You can't do anything with them. They just keep whacking at you. Okay. There we go, lined up now. 57, Swaldy's in there. Brian Swaldy in at center. Ronnie Lentini, quarterback, hands off to number 30, the ball carrier for the Red Tornadoes, James Zublik. Gain of five yards. Nice run that time by Zublik. 336 left in the ball game. Zublik's a five foot, 745 pound tailback. Matt Van Duren into the lineup now. 
Number eight, Smith, comes with the sidelines. I guess they're the play callers. They're going to be yeah. in and out. Yeah, they, they're, 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 they're ferrying the play. And I believe number 10 is going to head back in, too, in a minute. 41, Mickey Moreau's is at fullback. He's got the ball. First down and more. There goes Mickey to the 31-yard line. Nice run by Moreau's. Hey, he looked tough that time, didn't he? Nice, yeah. some nice, some nice running, nice cutback that time by Moreau's. Good play. I'll tell you what, you got some uh, very good blocking by a young line, Mount Carmel line in there, um, putting some holes in there. You know, Mickey finding them, following his blockers. Now, to Coach Young's credit, I, it looks like he's put an entire yep, team in. Another team. You got a whole bunch of new white jerseys out there, and that's that's good to see on their side of the ball, too, because those are kids that are going to be coming up next year and the year after. This one's going to Mike. No, that one didn't go anywhere. And Ronnie Lentini still has the ball, and it's back to the 39-yard line. We had a little bit of a jumble up on that. Time winding down, 2.08. 33 to nothing, Red Tornadoes. And for a young Tornado team, they did an impressive job tonight. Oh, absolutely. You gotta, you gotta be proud of this, you really do. The defending state champions. Uh oh, my man's in there, number 10, Powell. Tailbacking. That one they handed off. Looked Fumble. like they, they thought, like Moreau's thought Powell was going to get it. Fumble. Fumble, ball recovered by the Blue Raiders. First down, Blue Raiders, 136 left on the clock. You're speechless again, Warren. Just, <laughs> just watching Tamaka. They've got a watch when they put a whole new group in. It's interesting. <laughs> they've got a new quarterback who I have no clue because he's wearing a different well, we jersey. Got, yeah, that's uh, Knoblock. Can oh, he's Knoblock. All right. <laughs> they had trouble with their first team, so when they're putting a whole new team in, that's going to be a real experiment. Tries it up the middle of the fullback. Some nice hitting in there by the young Red Tornadoes. 89, Tom Jacobs. Uh, 28, 70, Al Bailey. 74, O'Brien. O'Brien. Time winding down. 34 seconds remaining in the football game. The clock continues to run. Timeout. Oh. Tamakwa. <laughs> Sorry to say. 29 <laughs> seconds left on the clock, and I guess maybe they wanted to get one more playoff. Yep, the Blue Raiders. Not are, too sure what that timeout was called I don't for. think the Blue Raiders know either, to tell you the truth. <laughs> the coach is coming out shaking his head. I don't know if he's got a clue. Of course, I mean, I, I think Jack, hey, Jack's got a young coaching staff, some young guys in there. Uh, they came in probably for the first time in a couple of years, they came in with some promise. They came in with a thought that, they were going to make a football game of it. It didn't right. turn out that way. They, they have not done that. Uh, they, they played kind of tough on defense in the first half. They, they wore down a little bit, and they lost some key players to injuries in, in the second half, and that was the end of them there. But offensively, they have a long way to go. They really do. They, they did not look good offensively. Uh, and, and I know he's got to be a little disappointed. That I think he probably thought he was a little further along than that as he began the season. Moreau's with the big rush, got bumped off by his own player, lost one downfield, intercepted, intercepted by, oh, it's incomplete. incomplete. Nice job by Mike Smith. <laughs> he knew he had that one, he just got it knocked out at the last second. 14.5 seconds remaining, we're in that point five on the new scoreboard, for those of you who forgot from last year that so amazed us. Those of you get a chance, when we, especially when we go to a away game, check out our, our new vehicle that we're driving around in, courtesy of uh, Industrial Maintenance and Construction. Frank Lowski's group painted a truck for us, and 
lets us use it for the games, and it really looks sharp. Makes us look professional, and it's pretty tough to make the three of us look professional. <laughs> Not making us look professional. It's the kids that are no, running this right. program. You know. There's no thought that we're professional. Yeah. <laughs> Try one up the middle, hit by Ronnie Lantini. Also in on the tackle, 80, 88 Jake Shellhammer. That'll be in the end of the ball game. The final score, the Red Tornadoes 33, Tamaqua Blue Raiders nothing. We'll just swing around here and keep things going. <coughs> All right, we're back here for the post game and down on the sidelines, Jose, you have some information for Bob, us. Real quickly, defensively, Tamaka rushed the ball 24 times for minus 21 yards. Oh. This marks the fifth consecutive year that we've shut them out. They haven't scored since Whitey's been coaching here. They were two of 11, two of 12 passing for 17 yards. So a minus four yard offensive effort for Tamaqua with one first down. So obviously our strength defensively proved itself tonight and hopefully we continue with that. Okay. Uh, offensively, although I'm not finished with everything, we rushed the ball 50 times tonight, which is quite a lot for a game with a net of 196 yards rushing Mike Whitovich did most of the passing, or all of the passing tonight, was five of eight for 68 yards. And Stevie Sinkovich finished with 20 carries for 94 yards to lead the rushing attack for Mount Carmel. Bob, that's about it for me. Turn it back over to you guys. All right, thanks, Jose. And we're gonna work on that a little bit and get him into the game a little more Absolutely. with his wireless mic. He, well, he adds a lot to the game because, I mean, everything that we read, he comes from him, so he might as well be the guy gonna tell us. And once he gets a little comfortable down there, he does a pretty good job. I think he's gonna fit in really well down there. I think both of you guys were really pleased tonight. I know we saw some things that, that were a young team, uh, just gr a growing team, but but the final outcome, you were excited and, and saw some nice things. Well, I think we saw a successful opening game. Oh, definitely. Yeah, you know the the normal you want that you want that opening game you you want to get the kinks out that's what we talked about at the beginning of the kickoff and that's what happened if you looked in the second half we did a much better job of of picking up our blocking assignments on offense you have to realize and you people have to be patient out there we have the center that played 15 games last year there was nobody else on that offensive line that played one offensive down last year we have Jason Malakoski that played all defense came in, did some uh, uh, offensive work there. Everybody else is all brand new, so we have to be patient at this point in time. Yeah, I mean, I, I said I think if you got a downside to the game, obviously the penalties, uh, the, some of the mental mistakes like that. But you're going to have that. That's going to occur. I, it's not something you need to dwell on. You got to go over it. You got to make sure everybody's on the same page. Uh, I think it's very easy. We didn't see any injuries, which was which was excellent. Nobody left the game right. on our side anyway. Uh, we played a, a, a Tamaka team that, that I, you know, offensively was not ready for prime time. Right. Maybe defensively they were a pretty good team. They, right. they gave us all we can handle for a while there. We look down the line now, of course, and as we talked about, we, we're going to be traveling to Lansford next week, uh, Friday night. We'll play the Panthers of Panther Valley, and again, they're an unknown quantity once again. Uh, most people aren't looking very highly at them. They're having a, they had a coaching change again. They have a lot of problems uh, in the district itself over athletics. So. We're not sure what kind of game we're going to right. see from them. We're hoping it's a good game because we need to start tuning up. And I said, you know, game three, of course, right. is the Tigers coming. So we need to get tuned up for them. They're going to be bringing the whole ball of wax with them again this year and, and wanting to avenge their loss last year at their stadium. So it's going to be an exciting year. And I, and I think that you're going to see so many talented kids once again. There's so many options here that, that it's really going to be fun to watch. Well, that's about it from the Silver Bowl. I'm Bob Else. I'm Warren Altamar. And Wayne Brokenshire. See you next week.